Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Fifth Anger Games. My name's DTM135. Joined today, going to be helping me cast and going to be helping me on the uh, analyst desk. We have Radicos, the host with the most, and we have the man from down under, the legend himself, Wingnut. How are you guys doing today? How are you feeling about these comps and stuff? Yeah, I'm doing bloody great. Though, unfortunately, I've lost me sunglasses. I don't know where they've gone. I, I, I feel naked. What's going on? <laughs> oh, you look great. Don't worry about it. Yeah, these uh, matches look pretty good. Uh, we have some uh, real good one between uh, who's the first one here? Scarf Experts and uh, and Jove Mining Co. Yeah, those guys. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the happens with them. But uh, I see, I see them coming through. I see Boundary Experts winning this one, or uh, Scarf Experts. Excuse me. That's that's your <laughs> prediction. What about you, Wingnut? I'm not predicting anything until I see the bloody comps, mate. I don't care who the pilots are. So it's all about the comp. It's not about the skill. I'm a, I'm almost a little bit, you know, I'm a little hurt. No, I'm not I, gonna I, lie. I, I like making uh, predictions until I see what's going on. You know. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, we do have some interesting stuff hitting the field, though. I'm kind of getting excited right now. Are you guys got your energy up for today? You're ready. Yep, very much hoping oh, so. Yeah. I need to wait till I get invited. <laughs> Sorry, ignore me. Why do you need an invite? Fleet invite. Yeah, X up for me. I did. Everything's all crazy for me today because I'm missing important stuff like sunglasses. So I I'm so disorganized. I'm so sorry. Is this? Do you wear your sunglasses inside when you're getting ready for the day? No, not no, in the slightest. Don't. I just figured just without the sunglasses, it's all downhill from there. That's very true. I have to wear them in the morning for at least 10 minutes. Otherwise, things get very confusing. <laughs> do you just lay in your bed and wear them, or do you actually get up? Or... No, they, they, normally they're on the desk dresser right next to me. You know, I get up, at, get it, wake up out of bed, put the glasses on. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I'm good, hopefully. I think we can switch oh. over. So what was that? All right, finally getting a chance to look at these comps. On Scarf Expert's side, we've got Widow, Guardian, Tengu, Draugr, Hecate, Vexer, Eris. What are we going going on for the other side, Wingnut? Uh, I think I can do that one. I'm not in system yet. Yes, fine. Oh, I wasn't man. paying attention though. DTM, who did you just uh, intro introduce? It's Scarf. Thank you so much for the save. Uh, the other side here, we've got Jovco Mining Division. What's going on over on their side? Jovco, right. So they've got a very interesting comp, and I'm interested to see how these guys do. So they've got a Confessor, Sacrilege, Prophecy, Demos, Talia, Eos, and a Deacon. And as I say that, the match is underway. Absolutely, starting right out. We're seeing the. The Hecate dive into the blue team right now, trying to get on top and lock some stuff down. A little bit of drones coming out. Those hammerheads going to be putting in work and damage on the Hecate right now. Jaxter has to work to mitigate damage or he's going to end up in a lot of trouble. He's going to end up uh, getting a little bit of reps here. Yeah, the Hecate, not really what's known in the business as a tanky ship, but he is holding on right now. The reps are landing, and to be honest, uh, the Scarf guys probably need to clear off that Hecate if they want to uh, get a bit more mobile. They are really kind of pinned down. We see first recon in the Sacrilege, of course. He is just being the heavy tackle for the uh, New Eden Jovko guys, and it looks like we have a little bit of a stalemate going on right now. Someone's going to break first, though, DTM. Who do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be this Eris in a second here. Uh, Zarvox Poral, you know, one of our famous one viewer streamers from the, you know, the Twitch era uh, of right now, is taking a lot of damage. Did kind of dip in the hole there for a moment. They're trying to figure out which tackle they need to clear out because, once again, mobility can definitely win matches. They need to get out, they need to get ahead, they need to be able to control the grid in the field. Um, but in order to do that, first they have to oh, clear this out. Sorry, to this sacrilege is dropping super, super low. First recon there, almost out of armor. It's going to be a trade. Eris, maybe for a sacrilege. I don't think that's a good trade right now for the for the uh, the, the Jovko guys. They're going to lose a big tanky ship. There he is. He is down. First recon in that 
that sacrilege is down. Meanwhile, you've got the Eris and Hecate both still alive for the Scarf team. That is big news. Yep. Uh, taking damage right now on the Scarf expert side. They just switched over to the Draugr. It looks like Deimos is taking damage uh, as well right now. He's getting some reps. They got to stay ahead and really clear off this uh, the stuff that's controlling down there, their cruisers and such. Yeah, I'm interested to find out how many of these jams are landing from this widow here of back lab slack. Um, I mean, are they working? Are they not? It looks like at the moment that they might not be working as well as we, we would hope so for that team. However, as I say that, the Demos of the, the Jovko guys is really struggling. So they are really trying to just fight through the damage coming in. Of course, a widow as well as being ECM but can put a lot of DPS. Yeah, the Tengu also taking damage, so we're seeing a little bit of split damage come in from Scarf right now as they're splitting a little bit between two targets. We are seeing the Draugr take more damage. You know, uh, Scarf has to kind of step it up though right now if they really want to um, sort of clear this grid without losing anything. But we're seeing big reps onto the Draugr as it almost goes down. Yeah, oh, that Demos is just hanging on, but he is going through Hull. He is going to go down as well. That's I Sovereign there in the Demos. There you go. He is down there as well. So we're in this little sort of like, oh, it's still, it's quite, it's still so close. Like it go either way right now. But that Scarf Tengu just started taking absolute chunks, and he is not getting any reps right now. As he is. now they're landing, they're landing. But that Talia just got one shot. Yep, absolutely obliterated off the field. Now they're in a really dangerous situation. You know, they don't have another rep ship, which suddenly makes all of the logistics on one ship much, much harder. Um, even though they do have two BCs out, they're going to have to figure out how they can properly use those. I don't know, really, because with all of the small stuff actually keeping um, Scarf pinned down, it's just, it's just going to be trouble. Yeah, honestly, I think at this point it's pretty much over for um, the, the Jovko guys is they lose their Deacon. So now they're just out of logistics. They've got an Eos Prophecy and a Confessor left. Uh, but are they going to be able to break a Guardian uh, reps? I really do not think so. They're putting some damage into that Tengu. Uh, I think it's too little too late. It's clearly he's caught reps. They're just not going to be able to break him. Uh, there was some rep bots floating around. There was some ECM bots floating around as well. Um, but it's just it's just not going to be enough for them as uh, Lydria in that Confessor goes down as well. And it is just those two Link boats left remaining to sort of tell the rest of their guys, hey, stop being so bad. I know it's practice, but we won't Absolutely. Getting on top of the small stuff with the heck game with the speed bonus from the micro is really critical in the beginning moments of this fight. Those pilots did a fantastic job. Jaxer got in there, um, trusted his Logi to get reps on him and keep him alive. Fantastic job on the Logi side from uh, Scarf here. Uh, we're seeing the Prophecy take a lot of damage. Probably going to end up going down because, of course, no rep. Yeah, I mean, Prophecy is, of course, very tanky ships, um, but it doesn't really matter if just can't kill anything basically and that's what's happening here and uh, the scarf guys that was a very very commanding performance from them what what was so good i think i mean they had the draugr for the uh, for the links obviously and the widow i think those jams might have made uh made some good work over the course of that match and of course the tengu uh, i'm not 100 with the rules right now so i'm imagining he can't fit um jams but if he could that would be oppressive um, so, very good performance from the Scarf guys, to be honest. Is there anything that the Jovko guys could have done to make this match go differently, in your opinion, DTM? Absolutely screening the small tackle off just to give you more time. You know, the Hecate is a high damage ship. Once the Draugr starts splitting up, it's a lot of damage. Eris can also be a lot of damage. They got in close, they started doing damage with their smaller ships, and counted on the jams from the Widow at the very least to sort of keep everything um, functioning for their side to eliminate some DPS, to eliminate some reps, whatever control is really important to them. Really good job and a really good showing from Scarf. Uh, all of their pilots doing their jobs, knowing what they need to do. You can tell these guys showed up, that they've been practicing, that they're taking this seriously. Yeah, it is just that Eos now of Blue Dagger who is hanging on to be the last person in his team to go down, uh, which will be literally imminently as he goes halfway through Hull. Um, that is it, that's the match over. So one point there to the Scarf, uh, Scarf experts, defeating Jovko Mine Division in uh, an exciting first match of the day for the Anger Games Open Practices number two.
Hey. I'm starting, to see, I'm starting to see some of the casters uh, land on grid and some interesting ships. Uh, oh, sorry. That's not a caster. Ooh, okay. That's a rain of clearance. Yeah, I can tell. Um, <laughs> it's a good ship to to clear the arena up with. So, yes. Wingnut, Radicoach, you guys just watched the match. What were your feelings? What are your thoughts? The one thing I saw there that kind of uh, helped them like win pretty much clean, Logi drones. They had a lot of them. The other team brought exactly zero. As far as I saw, they brought the two Logi frigates and no Logi drones to back them up. Meanwhile, the team brought a Guardian and Logi drones. Yeah. Which is like, you're just doubling up, making sure nothing will die. At least yeah, until they big, start swapping big reps there on that draw. Yeah. that was uh, huge for their team to keep that go uh, keep that guy up, um, or that would have uh, you know their links have been gone, and that would have ended the ended their uh, their fight there because uh, that would just have been killed everything. Their tanks, everything would have been hold be able to hold up. Yeah, it would have killed the tanks in a while, but they would have lost a lot of DPS as well. But yeah, oh, like, yeah I just think honestly, was on the amount of logic drones they had. They had heavy logic drones. They had medium logic drones. They had some lights as well. The other team brought none. They brought pure DPS and a bit of Hornet ECs. So, honestly, I just feel like that bought them the time they need for Logi to catch. for like Because obviously, Armor Logi, end of the cycle, you need a bit more time. So, having Logi drones on standby does give you that extra second or two to, for your Guardian, your Guardian, to get get the reps going. Yeah, I mean, the Hakate not dying and the Iris not dying, that's a lot of DPS as well, you know? Exactly. Um, and you can't, and that, you know, that... Uh especially since her tackle, like you're, you're holding down what you need, being able to tank and applying a lot of DPS. Uh, wasn't uh, spent a long time on the field for the other team, especially without Logi drones. Yeah, it's a super duper important thing to look at when you're running a comp like that. Everybody needs to know their job. Props to those guys. The Draugr, the Eris, the Hecate getting in and getting on top, especially the Hecate coming out of the gate so fast. You know, it, reaction time doesn't normally matter unless you're trying to get, you know, to the enemy as quickly as possible to lock stuff down. And that's like a real key there is to sort of um, play to your strengths and make sure that everybody knows what they're doing. And that's exactly what you need in a comp like that. Reps need to be doing their job well. People need to be doing good with their Logi drones. Um, if you have jams, they need to be landing correctly. And, you know, most importantly, uh, at the end of the day, they were able to keep those small ships up. And I think it's, you're absolutely correct. It's spelled doom for the enemy team. Yeah, exactly. And the interesting thing as well is that obviously they had the Hecate and Eris rushing in. If the enemy team had Logi drones and they couldn't break them and their ships did not die, like their Eris and Hecate stayed alive, those Eris and Hecates could have actually started just picking off rep drones at point blank and just gone pop, 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 pop. Whether they have made the call to do that, I don't know. But like the point is that you know, they, they survived as far as I'm concerned because of longevity. And they could have denied that to the opposing team with the comp they had, which is honestly a very, very strong thing, which I hope Radicals would agree with. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Sorry, I was I'm looking wrong. at See you guys. <laughs> shadow card. We have shadow card talent, turbo feeder glory. Next, it looks like. Well, it looks okay. like yes. Yeah, what do you guys be a think good about match. Uh, you know, we're seeing uh, some uh, drones, uh, Ishtar's Vexer, Eos. Uh, we're also seeing. Uh, Rodiva is on field, and uh, as we learned last week, that uh, reps a whole hell of a lot. Trig Logi is, is, is fake. Don't believe it. <laughs> They're terrible. Nope. You can never, you can never convince me otherwise. <laughs> be a very interesting match, though. Once we get to the arena, we can explain it a bit more, but this is looking interesting for sure. Yeah, I'm starting to get excited with some of the holes I'm seeing on grid. Uh, definitely. What, what do you guys think about, you know, you kind of have this, this monolith, uh, shadow cartel, um, going against, I think turbo feed's been around for a couple years now, right? How long have they been around guys? Oh, turbo feeder glory. I see they were in the last, the, in the AT, but I don't know if they made it out of the, out of the, uh, out of the, what's it called? Uh, out of the fear rounds. So. Yeah. Um, so we have a little bit of a, of a new face in some regards going against sort of this monolith and I, I'm, I'm excited to see, maybe we, maybe we see the beginning of some rivalries form. It's always fun when that happens. Cool, yeah. And we've seen upsets in the past and we've seen some incredible upsets in the past. I mean, we all mean about the Templars thing way once upon a time, you know, it's, <laughs> you never, you never discount a team until you see what they've done. Absolutely exactly. the truth.
It'll be interesting. All right. Can't wait for you to go through this one. This is, honestly, I think it's two different takes on the same idea to some degree. Uh, hey, we flipped over. There we go. All right. So on Turbo Fleet's side, we got Lashak, Absolution, the Rediva, Magus, Smaller, Vexer, Crucifier. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Shadow Cartel, Mr. Well, Raptor? Gone... Oh, sorry. Well, uh, Shadow Cartel, uh, we have an Eos, Double Ishtar, Stratios, Double Beacon, and a Magus. Which, what do you uh, think? I see with the ship bans, you know, they have the hyena is banned, uh, but they wanted to bring drones. And kept, you would think they'd want to have a hyena there, but uh, I guess this is what they'll go with. Uh, I, I just, I don't see, um, you know, a Stratios is, uh, Stratios, I'm not sure if that's the greatest pick. I think I would probably go for, uh, uh, I, I would rather have a Vexor over a Stratios, to be completely honest. Um, this is the resist suck, and um, I'd rather have just the ability of everything that a Vexor can do. But Yep, and we're already seeing the beginning of the match, that Stratios, getting hit they're trying to take it down turbo feed doesn't want to leave too many drones on field and when you're looking at what's on the enemy side uh lots of drones lots of utility uh, especially depending on where the highs are um turbo feed trying to looks like they're trying to deal with some of the the enemy drones here looks like they're pulling back now yeah it looks like uh the vexer on uh on turbo feeder glories uh is taking some damage um right now um, and it looks like they were shooting at the, uh, oh, looks like the, the little shack is getting, uh, the, the, everything, uh, primary down to it right now, um, from the, uh, Shadow Cartel team, which is very smart to take that out, uh, because it's such a ship that, can, it's a ship that can just kind of go solo almost, you know, uh, especially, uh, we've seen in tournaments past. It's a very, very strong ship. And absolutely a critical moment just happening here. The Mauler stepping up ahead a little bit of the Lashak to screen as the Magus microed in. Got scrammed by the Mauler. The Magus in a dangerous spot right now in between two people. That Lashak operating smart uh, bombs. One of the few ships in the game to have sort of any bonuses towards smart bombs. And yet on the other side, the, the Stradio seems to be taking pretty well with the Lashak on it. Um... And now the Mauler is taking DPS, and he is going down quickly. Um, I didn't expect to see it this fast happening. These drones really doing work here on this Mauler. Absolutely. The Lashak doing a flyby with the smart bombs, trying to clear off some of these drones right now. Meanwhile, the Magus is still held in position. The Mauler oh, going now. into the hole right now, taking a lot of damage. Ooh, There's one down. Oh, then the Stratios is, looks like he's gonna, you know, the Lashak is spooling up on that and the Absolution, all that DPS, uh, you know, that's a decent amount of DPS. They can go down, they can get, they can, you know, this Tordiva has been repping on it for a while, so should see some big reps, but it doesn't, th I don't think it's gonna pull through. I think we're gonna see the Stratios go down here, he's about to hit hole. Absolutely, he is going very, very low right now. The, oh, the he's taking chunk. Oh, there's the Shack spooling up, getting big damage. The Magus somehow still alive. It looks like a Vexor stepped up to keep him controlled and sort mm -hmm. of not able to pull back to his teammates to get a little bit more safety and range from things. Meanwhile, Stratios half hole. Yeah, he's down. Go down. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's DPS off for that Lashak. That'll help him and hold his tank in all the way it has already. I wonder if they're going to switch to, you know, they need to, you know, they should switch to that Rediva, I think. I think they would crush it. Absolutely. Eos taking a bit of damage now. Still reps going down on the Shack. The Magus actually getting some of its armor back. That's kind of huge as it sort of pulls away a little bit more towards safety. Uh, the Lashak still smart bombing. That was a key thing to bring to this fight, I think. Smart bombs really do help sort of clear drones, apply some pressure Absolutely. depending on how close those drones have to get. I mean, he's got all those newts. Like, he is just doing work right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, the yeah, Deke is drones. getting oh, sorry. <laughs> You're absolutely fine. What's up, Radicos? No, it's just, you know, you think, uh, you think the drones, uh, you know, you, you could do a little better kiting and not, you know, get yourself caught and stuff like that. But these guys are just letting them to, like sit in ducks out there. I mean, you got to be moving if you're bringing a drone comp. You know, you got you to fly it the right way. Yeah, absolutely. We saw that earlier with the Magus come in, trying to get a little bit of control on. That was a good play by the Mauler stepping up and screening it off. Looks like the Rodiva is now taking damage from Turbo Feeder Glory. Uh, maybe they're listening to the cast. I don't know what's going on, but they definitely recognize an opportunity to put some damage out onto it. 
We are seeing, it looks like, that some Rodiva, yep. drones go to the Rodiva right now, but the Rodiva might get traded out here. Oh, uh, or sorry, absolutely, not even a trade, just absolutely getting dominated. Though we are seeing the reps now start to hit a little bit. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be enough. Drones Oof. do do a lot of damage. Oh, here he goes. He's he's done. He is out. Now this is this is decidedly now. Uh, I mean, I kind of felt like it already was for the turbo turbo feeder uh, for shadow or, uh, Excuse me for uh, turbo feeder glory, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah, a little bit of a pullback here, even losing that Stratios early on. They're doing a good job calling primaries, trying to stay a little bit ahead of the curve, making good trades. The Rediva was a good call, not a ton of reps being able to go down onto it. We're seeing the uh, the Crucifier take a little bit of damage, but I think Blue Side's just kind of trying to figure out, you know, they have a second here of breathing room to kind of pick what they want to shoot at next, figure out, you know, what's the best primary. It looks like the Ishtar uh, of John on the Blue Side is taking a little bit of damage here. Um, what are you thinking so far at this match? Who are you calling it for right now? Oof, it's still a close one here. I mean, the Leshek, they're keeping damage on the Leshek, but I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I think they, maybe they need to take out links for them or something. There's, I mean, that that, that Ishtar will only hold on for so long with this Leshek and uh, Absolution on that thing. Yeah, this is one of those situations where the Ishtar wants to get out of range of the Lashak, reset some damage. It absolutely does look like they're pulling away. Meanwhile, the Lashak mm -hmm. is burning towards them. You're right in saying that maybe they do want to kill Lynx. They really have to make a good call right here because they are in a race against time. They do have reps. It doesn't look like it's holding particularly well on the Ishtar right now. Meanwhile, that Lashak is looking very healthy with all of the armor it has. Oh, it yes, looks like the Vexer might be taking some more damage now they might have switched off oh, it meanwhile that ishtar, ishtar dropping into uh what is that 2016 percent that's a big damage hit uh while these reps are coming in hovering that 20 percent armor yeah we're seeing uh just just a just a slow game of uh dps and logic trying to keep up I, I don't know uh if this if this ishtar can can hold this lashek might go down but if that ishtar goes down that lashek I believe we'll hold without without uh, logistics. I think I just don't think there'll be enough DPS on the field to to do it. Uh, so. Yeah, there's a big question here too. Red side still has a crucifier. Now, if that pilot's really good, I don't know exactly how they have him fit. Um, it does look like we just saw a scram attempt to a deacon. These deacons. It looks like a Magus just got on top of him, uh, but he is getting webbed oh, off. Oh, there goes the right Ishtar. Now. Oh, low oh. in the hall. And he's out. And he's out. Oh, that's huge for the Lashak right there. Holy crap. Let's see if uh, they can keep capitalizing if that Lashak can stabilize. Uh oh, their links are going they're going after their links. There is quite Turbo a bit of damage going. going. Mm -hmm. It looks like Turbo Feed's also going after this Deacon right now. Definitely yeah, trying to drop Deacon, some yep. damage into it. Um, you know, they're deciding right now, hey, these reps, you know, they're clearly making this trade take too long, so we have to switch over. Um now there is a scram onto a Lashak right now, which means if the Lashak's micro fit, it's going to be dropping speed here. And that goes back to a whole other thing where like battleships are big sigs. Battleships take a lot of damage. And we have seen a masterful armor tank coming out of this Lashak right now. And the smart bomb on it. You don't necessarily want to put drones on it, but he's so low armor. He's looking yeah. really juicy right now. It is looking. He's not here. For, he's not, uh, he's not going to see the light soon. He's going to be out. Yeah, Let's so the here. real question is, is Turbo Feed going to be able to make a decent trade? I mean, if they can get the Ishtar before the Lashet goes down, which might happen, because his spool is up now on the, on the Ishtar, um, he might be able to, they might be able to pull it out, but with an Absolution versus Eos, two Deacons, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, well, they're a drone comp. I don't see a ton of drones, but they are trying to apply more to him. Um, it looks like he just put some drones out. He is bleeding into hull, actually taking a lot of hull damage yep, generally right now. Yep, that Ishtar is tanking, too. Yep, that Ishtar is tanking. Yeah, um, which is going to put them in a dangerous situation because I don't know, I don't believe that a Absolution and Vexor on its own can break double Deacon reps. I don't think so. One minute left. Here goes the Lashak. Yeah, he's not getting any reps. They're just chewing through all of it. He's... And that goes back to one of those things. There goes like, the Lashak, guys. They well, want to leave the smart bombs on, you know, running on that Lashak almost all the time to discourage drones being placed on it. But at the end of the day, 
you know, depending on what kind of drones you have, they might be orbiting just outside the damage range. Or beyond that, they might not just care. Just whittle them down slowly but surely. Pull your flights when they get low. Send them back in. Um, now the real question for them is, can they last long enough to the end of the timer? I mean, even if they do, the points are gone. That's 35 points from Morshak, so going down. So, yeah, 70, 44, yeah, it's... I don't think I'll see anything else die. I don't think we'll see anything else die at all. Three seconds left, two seconds left, one second left. That's going to be time. Shadow Cartel is your winner. Turbo Theater Glory, you go back and try to... You know, have a little conversation. You know, try to figure out uh, what what they need to do for the next the next time they're uh, going against drones. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a fun match, Wingnut. What are your thoughts? There was a few bits and pieces I was watching and that was pretty interesting. For one, near the end there, that big brawl they had going when the Lashak was dying, and Ishtar and the Lashak got to 119 kilometers out. They were so close to the boundary. And in the Lashak too, which is, you know, you don't exactly turn on a dime, so that's pretty risky playing there. The interesting thing Absolutely. as well is that t Turbo Feed during that, they were playing the drone war. They were trying to play full drone war there. For a while, I saw them put, uh, when the Rodiva got targeted, they dumped out a bunch of Logi drones to try and go into the Rodiva. Don't, don't forget, they're pretty much a Logi comp. They put most of their DPS, except for the Lashak and the Absolution, just into keeping the Rodiva alive. So they, yeah. they, sp they spent a lot of effort. They, they had DPS drones on, on, the, uh, on the Ishtar drones, I think. That's what I th think I saw. So they were trying their best to keep the Rodiva alive. I could be wrong. This is just what I saw. So that they were trying to play a drone game there against this comp. And I'm honestly surprised it, did, it went the way it did, to be honest. Because that's the thing about heavy drones is you can kite them to a jump beacon, then just jump away and just be really, really, really annoying. Like, you can be incredibly annoying in that comp. And the, the Ishtar EOS comp they had there, that's like they can be easily kiteable. They have no tackle. They're just a kiting drone comp. Absolutely. And also, one more mention as well is you were talking about the Stratios. I looked at the comp and I don't see what they could replace the Stratios with. There's, I don't see what you'd replace that with. You, yes, you can downgrade to a Vexa, sure, but then what would you get for that points? That comp is pretty much maxed out. Eos, double Ishtar, double D. Can you Magus. get a Mirim out of that? A what? Can you get a Mirim if you take a... If you... Uh... Oh, I suppose Mirim? not. No, Mirim's like 19 points or 17. Yeah, that, as far as I'm aware, that comp is effectively maxed out. The Stratos is just the best drone ship they can get for the price. Yep. So I think that comp's pretty damn good, to be honest. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I do want to take a moment to just talk about Able Games Charity. Uh, Able Gamers is providing peer support and controller grants to gamers worldwide. We're doing, because uh, we're on INN and other things, we're doing a little bit of charity stuff for them. So, guys, please make sure to support a good cause. Um, I believe the donation links are down below or maybe in chat. Uh, is it good, the good, good, good people, good charity? Yep, yep. Yeah, just some quick facts about them. Um, Able Gamers Charity helped create the Xbox Adaptive Controller. The inspiration for the controller came in part uh, from the Android Switchblade controller created by Able Gamers. Um, Able Gamers Charity provides peer, peer support and uh, control grants to gamers worldwide. Uh, the mission of Able Gamers started over 15 years ago, so they're not just some new, new organization. So. Absolutely. Um, but... On to sort of the next match, guys. I believe the next match is going to be uh, Want to Buy Cat Ears 500 Plex versus Snuffed Out. Oh, this will be yep. a good match. Very much so. And looking at the comps as well, it's going to be interesting. I don't even know what to say until we like till it starts. I'm just looking at going, what's this going to be? Yep, yep. Oh. Let's get everyone locked up and sorted here. Yes. Not. I will admit. Is this, this another um, drone? Another drone uh, match here. Uh, on one side, yes. On the other side, absolutely no. <laughs> the other side is a very. I don't even know what you call that. That's um. Different. Maybe I'm just not in the right mindset right now. But I. I that is. That's a comp. <laughs> Jesus. 
But yes, other side we got drones. So we're interesting to see this weird mixed comp versus drones. Hey, pardon the what? Yes, blue microphones giveaway. Hell yeah. I'm just going to get in on that myself. <laughs> I would, but uh, I'm still banned from uh, Twitch chat, so. <laughs> Don't worry, Radicos. If I win it, I will laugh at you. <laughs> but yeah, I'll so just bench a... you. So there you go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <no. laughs> but yeah, so there's a giveaway in chat, guys. Feel free to enter. Or don't. I don't really care because that means there's more chance for me to win. You put the bands <laughs> on. Oh, yes, the bands. You guys got the bands? Because I don't have the bands. Want to buy cat ears? Have banned the scimitar, Hila, Armageddon, and snuffed out, banning the Loki, Curse, and Zarmzad. Yeah, fair enough. That is a good set of bands, to be honest. Gila band's pretty normal. Did you say Armageddon band? Correct. Armageddon has been banned by Want to Buy Cat 500 Plex. I mean, Ageddon is effectively, in my opinion, just a better, cheaper uh, Balgon for most of the, like, for 90% of the work. So I get that they banned that over a Balgon, but I think it's one of the first times I've seen people actually pick to ban the uh, Geddon first, you know? So hey, good on them. Blast the Rush, they banned Newts. Good idea, Jalen. And once we see the arena, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like I like seeing what the people in chat think when they hear certain bands. So it's awesome to hear. Willing to buy cap ears? It's a typo. <laughs> Is that ears for your capital ships? Oh no. <laughs> uh... I do not support cat ears the, to put uh, on for ears. us. I do not cat ears on it. ships. Could you imagine cat ears on a Nyx? Please no, or on an avatar. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. It's like getting DD'd by an avatar, a pink avatar with 10 seconds. It's a, space, a space penis with cat ears. Like, please no. All right, uh, time is starting, by the way. You're going to flip us over the other screen? Please flip us over. Yep, it's a bit late. All right, boosts are going up. They're dropping drones. Here we go. Well, we not we not got the other screen Let's at the see moment. Who moves in here? It looks like a Punisher of uh, right, Cat something. Ears is pushing in, and the Vigilant is kind of pushing in as well, going around a little direction. There we go. All right. So it's a very interesting comp going on at the moment. The bottom screen is not working, but it's effectively a weird ass blaster rush versus a full drone comp. So that's why it was very interesting that Jalen called blaster rush, and this is a weird blaster rush. So, yeah, everything at the bottom isn't working. Ignore right, that for now, guys. Bit of Spice Weasel uh, from Cat Ears is getting DPS, and it looks like they're going after the Hyena. Uh, trying to... S oh, well, maybe it's just got a one-shot on it. I'm not sure here. Yeah, and as for picking the Thorax, that's a good call. It's probably the, the least tanky thing on grid. Yeah, I'd probably absolutely. also consider the Vigilant, but I guess... a decent amount of DPS. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a Vigilant, but it's, you know, it's probably less tanked than the Vigilant is. Yeah, they're both going onto the uh, the Punisher. Vigilant has got the, got all that down, hyena is over half half armor right now. That oh, goes down. That's not down. good for it. Uh, snuffed out. Indeed. Though I don't know if it's going to matter. Actually, it probably does. Kiting oh, drone comp just there. Just watching this vigilant. Just is that the garden is there. guaranteed not a fast one. He's only going. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, eight hundred ninety-one. So. Yep, and look at that, the Punisher's know. getting hit as well. Are they switching to the Baden? Are you serious? Uh, <laughs> um, are they? I see one set of drones on the Abaddon. Yeah, there's one only set of some just... drones. Yeah. Uh, and oh, the Hyena yeah. goes down! Oh yep. man, yeah. that's not good for Snuffed Out. And the Punisher went down too. So that's two set to tackle, gone in one, in one instant. So that's honestly pretty much all their defensive tackle removed. I don't know what this uh, scor this scorpion is landing his jams or not. I sure hope uh, he's jamming out those drones, because if he's not jamming out those drones, he's doing it wrong. Oh, and the vengeance! That's a tanky, tanky assault freak down for snuffed out. Yep. That is not good. Cat ears is establishing their dominance right now. Blast the rush, baby, all the time. Let's go. <laughs> 
I, I, I love this to bits. The Scorpion's, yeah, an interesting call for sure. He's doing quite well. I think he's actually jamming out the Guardian and the Ishtar and the other Ishtar. So he's going full Ishtar okay. jamming and Guardian jamming. So he's not targeting drones, he's just targeting the ships. And now he's MJDing. Oh, look at this. The, the DPS drones are going after the Scorpion, so he's MJDing to the next beacon before they even arrive. Yep. There you go. That's that's the that's problem with bringing in heavy drone copies. Right we saw this last year, actually, in the Anger Games, that we saw a uh, sentry drone comp just bounce beacon to beacon to beacon, avoiding heavy drones. And we see it now, pretty much that same situation again. He's going to go burn, he's going to have to do a small burn to the next beacon, but he can then do it again. So, bravo. What else is going on? I just see, that obviously, damage being spread. They're going after the EOS now and the Guardian at the same time. I guess they can't decide which one they want to kill. <laughs> Damn, they're actually ripping through an EOS. That's kind of crazy. I guess maybe the Guardian's still jammed. No, no, that was probably a cycle from the Guardian. Interesting. Very interesting. That EOS, man. As long yeah. as that Guardian stays jammed. Oh, it looks like he's unjammed. He's repping hard now. Exactly. I like it. You can that see the moment he gets unjammed. Gets DPS on him. His drones are caught up. Let's see what happens and here. Interesting thing as well is there is a um oh, a that gun vector. Oh, is he? He is getting chunked unbelievably right now by these drones. Getting chunked. Filadio of Cat Ears is going down. He's MJ Ding again. Ready? What's, what's the ping? What's the ping? Oh, he is. Look is at he that. Gonna survive it? Oh! Come on, jump, buddy! Hey! Well played. Wow. And he's running to the next beacon. And that Guardian on it's the other side for snuff. Uh oh. Yeah, he's had a, a gun vexer sitting on him this entire time, but now everyone else has decided to switch off and start targeting him. You can yes, see now the all... Vigilant, the Thorax, the Vexer, they've all, all switched that work off. All that work on now is all repped up fully. Yep. I actually don't think Scorpion has that much armor to give him, so that, yeah, that might just be like an <laughs> easy rep. But yeah, I don't know why would they would take a Guardian instead of a, a Neros when the Neros is open. And that's something that's a that lot of... my team learned from the AT. Like, you gotta remember those things. The one thing yeah. I don't quite get... Like, I get the whole, like, don't bring the Guardian. I agree with you there. And here's the thing, because they brought the Guardian, they need to bring Tackle. They brought the Vengeance, Hyena, yep. and Punisher just to protect it. Whereas these drone comps, you know, you don't need Tackle. Well, the they drones don't have do any of those Tackle anyways. And that Scorpion, here we go again. Is he getting on another, uh, is he getting on another MJD beacon? Because he's he getting, was getting the again. beacon, yes. He's right on the that beacon. Guardian's now. doing a really good there? job of mitigating a lot of the damage. Uh, I think yeah. Michael, he did, he, is this the same uh, snuffed out logistics pilot from AT? Because he was a hero for snuffed out, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe that was just opens. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. So the Scorpion is now on the beacon, but I don't see any drones actually on nope, him. Nope, the they're moment, off so. now again. And here we go. The there Guardian. The Guardian. Is, yep. He goes now. Oh, man. Cat ears yep. with that projection um, and blaster rush. Wow. There's, as I said, when I said the store, I was like, this is such a mixed comp idea. Oh, but they're switching the Aneros. Oh, they're going for the Lodgy trade a little bit late, but maybe not too late. late. <laughs> if, if they can take out the Aneros, they might still have a chance. They kite it out. No, I, I mean, I, I like your enthusiasm. I, I, I think, like your belief. I mean, but the, they, no. if they ignore the Abaddon and go after, you know, and go after Vexor, uh, Vexor, Demos, Scorpion, they can, I believe they can win on points. I yeah, just don't see it happening because now that Logi's gone, that he also will eat a bag of dicks. I don't know. Hasn't ha no mark uh, messages come up for the timer yet. But yeah, I, I don't oh, see it happening because now that the uh, that Logi is gone, that EOS will eat a bag of dicks real quick. Three and a half minutes left. Three and a half. No, minutes the left. EOS, the the Oneros is uh, is is cat ears, right? Yeah. Once this Vigilant so, gets on the EOS, there we go. He's got the web on the EOS now, so now oh the Abaddon can no. burn over as well. So yeah, at that point... And that Aeneas is holding uh, in hull, just, just oh wrapping God. up. Is oh, he going to nope, go down? No. You shouldn't have said that. No, you cursed him. He's going to go pop. He's holding. Uh, believe! He, oh, look at him just wrapping a little bit of hull he has left. Believe! <laughs> oh my God. Bravo! I, I think he might just hold. To be fair, though, these drones could get a lucky shot. That's a problem with drones. They can that just EOS say, is screw your logic. Slowly, slowly dropping here. Yeah, that's yep. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop leaving for stuff now because if they can't take that Aneros down, then they can't kill any other ships. That's just the way it is. It's what they have left. Like yeah, they have three DPS ships left, but with vigilant webs on a Eos with a, a 
Abaddon coming in with Conflag L here, and you're in big trouble. There man. it is, yeah. There he yeah. goes. Yeros might just hold. I wonder if it... I don't think he did, but the way he survived there, I wonder if he could try, try for an ancillary reload. Yeah, I mean, two That's why stars, got so close. Even if they even if they get through this this Eos, um, I don't see or not this is an Eos, and he's down. Let's see, uh, let's see what these Ishtars can do. It looks like uh, one Ishtar is locked down by the vigilance. So yep, it's, they can't. I mean, they got to kill a battleship here. They can't go after anything else, and they're not going to kill a battleship uh, before an Ishtar dies. I'll tell you that much. That was a good run though by Snuff. They were they a few times in this match. I thought they were gonna maybe pull it out even as being underdog, but Cadiers uh, established their dominance and uh, made a Lodgy trade way before they could make the Lodgy trade. And it shows uh, exactly what happens if you don't just go the Lodgy trade right away. Uh, it's such a, a weird comp though. Like, here's the thing: like both comps. I don't. Know, I don't mean it in a bad way. Both comps just seem subpar. But at the same time, it's like they are. It was such an interesting fight the whole way through. Like bringing a guardian to a kite logi drone comp. So sorry, kite drone comp. Sorry, it's kind of like what? What are you doing? But at the same time, we've got this weird scorpion abaddon blaster rush. What? <laughs> it's, it's it's such a weird set of uh, ships. All right, just one Ishtar left, I believe. Or is that? Oh, he's on that side, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Cat Ishtar. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens when you can't match your Lodgy with uh, what DPS trips you have. Just uh, Snuff doesn't know how to win without doing that. So it's just too bad. Yeah, it is It is just, just a weird comp the whole way through. It's both sides, I don't know. Snuffed out, I'm not sure why they brought the Guardian. Pretty, they probably do have a reason, to be fair, why they brought the Guardian bench to in the Punisher setup. I would love to know what it is, even if they would tell the truth or not. It's. I would love to know what the reasoning was, but we can probably agree that the Guardian probably isn't the best call there. But there they go. Bravo to uh, Cadius. Bravo. Good job, uh, Jintan and his boys. Uh, they are a pretty good team. Um, we practiced against them. Uh, they're actually our first practice mates. Um, and they were... Yeah, they're pretty good. It was good to see them execute against Snuffed Out, um, who have guys that are being good on their team as well. It's just, uh, you know, jams can really mess up everything. <laughs> as we've all seen before yeah that's yeah that was such a wild comp I, I love that so much because I, I love blaster rushes blaster rushes are fun any rush is fun but a blaster rush with a backup of Baden and then a scorpion bouncing from beacon to beacon playing ECM that is just <laughs> that is so weird what do you think DDM I think that was one of my favorite things to watch is a blaster comp in action and not just in oh, yeah. action, but executed correctly. Jintan went in with his Punisher, got tackled, instantly called for a Thorax to come over. Then the Vigilance shows up. Then the rest of the team shows up and said, and Jintan said, yo, I brought my brothers to the fight. You know, don't, don't just, don't think I'm counting out. Don't count me out. You can put the drones on me. The jams did well. The rep was done well. It was absolutely a fantastic match to watch. It was just good all around. I cannot complain about watching a fun match. You're absolutely right when you say all the way through, step to step to step. We got to see people do interesting things, and we got to see um, exciting plays. Yeah, and like, the good thing is well, having the faith in your logic to save you as, a, as your tackle ship and tackling at the right time. Like... We've seen some people go, go diving with a Punisher, tackle a thing, and then die in seconds. Like, uh, Jintan did it perfectly right where he had his boys ready to save him, back him up, nuke the tackle, and keep moving. It is it is just perfect. And bringing a Vigilant Thorax, the double penis combo, I love to bits. It's great. The double penis! <laughs> yeah. Let's see what you did there. Yeah, you know, uh, phallic penetration and whatnot. Oof. But yeah, I... I I, I really want to know. What, does anyone else here think there's a reason for the Guardian? Like, is there actually a good reason? We're not just shit talking them? Like, anyone? I mean, it's I've their choice. only they ever seen. Think... Yeah, I choice, mean, maybe yeah. it was the flex move. Maybe they said, hey, we don't need an Oneos. Why would we need, you know, dual, dual Lodgy frigates or whatever? Um, or, and, you know, I can't really think of a crazy good reason for the. Uh, the Guardian, and then a lot of tank compared to the Onero. So a Guardian a does rep thing. more. You can fit yeah. more, uh, more reps on a Guardian than an Oneros. 
But in my opinion, it's the poor choice. You you should almost always take, especially in 7v7. In 10v10 and even 12v12, it's sort of swings and roundabouts. There's advantages for yep, both. Exactly. But in 7v7, an ears has to be an ears. Yeah, absolutely. I think another way of looking at it as well is that an, a um a supported guardian is better than an un, than a supported or unsupported Aniros, but an unsupported guardian is worse than an unsupported Aniros. If you can Absolutely. back it up and protect it, it will do better. But if it's on its own, the Aniros is just superior. Yeah, well, I mean, we have you dual prop on the Aniros, and you can just motorboat around. You get scrammed. Okay, switch to my AB and basically get out from it and mitigate more damage. Like it's, I think uh, I think an Aniros is just a better a better uh, in, in this format at least a better logistic ship cruiser logistic ship for armor i mean Very i think the Zarya, that is pretty good and i don't Boo! I, Boo! I, I think the Aniros is better but uh you know the zarmazad does i've seen it rep uh and once it gets spools up it is pretty intense in this format i know you don't like that but it's the Boo! triangle logic is trash <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you you can't uh you can you can't convince me otherwise. Triangles are crap. Free. Well, this next match will be interesting. <laughs> yes, we're just having a look. It's my kind of match here. Yeah. Well, we, we I, without giving too much away yet, guys. Why everything's showing up? No drones. I mean, there's a few you no know, ships with drone bays, but well, there is ships. a vindicator on field. Yes. So happy. Have you ever been repped by a Derifto? Nope, only ever been murdered by uh, triangles, therefore I am permanently biased. <laughs> yeah, I I'm loving this, dude. This looks interesting. This is going to be... I, I love this to bits. And of course, I have to say, the obligatory Stabber fleet has now arrived. <laughs> All right, everything's just arriving on grid now, so give us a little moment, guys. Get things locked up for you. I'm just, I'm just loving looking at the guys in, in chat. Thank you so much for being awesome and just bringing out the memes. Uh, uh, what do we lock? Have we switched over? Yeah, let's let's switch over, right? It looks like it's going to be me and DTM. Oh no, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, then, so DTM, starts off. I'm going to talk about the comp I'm excited about, and then you can go from there. Paper numbers. Bring it in. Augur Navy issue. Stabber Fleet issue. Vindicator for the Vindication. Magus Tormentor. Rodiva. I know you hate Triangle Logi, but you know what? My money's on them. Who you got? I know. I'm so sad. Like, I'm so conflict conflicted. There's a Vindicator. I love it. But on the other side, we have Paladin. Uh, where's the rest of it? Paladin. Abaddon. Vexa. A lot of just, I'm sorry, my brain just kind of like got cut off for a second there because the match just started. But uh, sorry, yeah, Paladin, Abaddon, Vexa, Draugr, Oneros, Crucify, and are we missing one? The Maul and Maulus Navy, there he is, the there he is. My apologies, it I could not find it. Looks like the fighting starting, the Rediva is already starting to take damage right out of the gate. We're seeing the Vindicator dive, 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 just like it was a submarine towards the enemy team, wanting to get on top, wanting to apply those webs, wanting to do a ton of damage. Maul's navy wasn't on grip when the match started, so he just walked in. <laughs> we are seeing the Draugr go in a bit. The Stabber fleet coming in from the side. Warp scram from the Draugr onto the Stabber. We're going to see the Stabber slow down just a bit here. And by a bit, I mean a lot, which means it's going to be sitting in the water a little bit. We are seeing Kaldari Navy Hornets already coming over to support them. Hopefully get some damage onto this Draugr as it is taking some DPS. A yeah, double dual prop from Stabber Fleet, but it's not. He is definitely just Michael Warp Drive. He's now trying to shoot the Draugr back. To be fair, Stabber Fleet can do very good damage, and they get tracking bonus uh, auto cannon, so they're surprisingly good. He's now going into armor. We'll see if the Rediva saves him. And you look at the Draugr. See what I mean? Look, the Draugr is actually taking a pounding right now. Yeah, the Draugr is taking a little bit of damage. This is one of those situations where, as a Rodiva, you're not really sure if you want to rep the smaller stuff right out of the gate, because as soon as you start spooling up on that, you're switching onto another target. And that's a real weakness of the Rodiva. In the beginning, its reps aren't as strong. We are seeing some damage Speaking onto the too. arrows. Speaking of as well, look at the Scorpion's now being shot too. So as you just said, you know, if you start repping the small stuff, something big might get shot. The Scorpion looks to you like he's holding on his own, no worries. Is this Scorpion Man, doing the, the exact same thing? 
a ton of damage. Oh. He got oh. revved by the Vindicator, so he's gonna go down. Absolutely Pop. no chance, man. You're watching his armor just peek back up, and after another couple seconds, another volley, and there he is going down. He let the Vindicator get close. Why would you do that? No one knows what it did happen. Now they're I down another ship. It's, decided it's time for a battleship fight, baby. Let's go. A Vindicator versus Abaddon now. Hell yeah. Yeah, the a Scorpion taking a little bit of damage. Want to mention, though, the Stabber Fleet issue is still up right now. Oh yeah, he's still fighting the Draugr and winning. Oh, he the is Draugr's shooting something else? What is the Draugr shooting? I'm just having a look. No, the no, Draugr's dead. dead, so it doesn't matter what he's shooting. Man, absolutely coming in with the Vindicator, kind of getting on top of the enemy opponents, hoping that Paladin does do more work, but it's just not working for them. They have to reconfigure what they're doing. They have to figure out, you know, is there a way we pull a win out of this match right now? They're only down two ships, even though one was Lodgy. Is there a way they can kite them out? If they stay and get away from the uh, the Vindicator, they might have a chance, but there's just a brawl going down in the middle, as I believe... The Vexer's in trouble again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the arsehole that calls things early. You've got a Vindicator backed by a Scorpion and you haven't beaten it already. You're done, boys. Vindicator's gonna mop you all up. Pull out the brooms. It's time for a sweep. Absolutely. A lot of damage going on to the Vexer right now. Meanwhile, the Vindicator, you know, has the Abaddon held down firm. You're not going anywhere as a battleship once a Vindicator webs you, no matter how bad you might want to. Um, the And look, absolutely just tearing apart the Abaddon on its own. Just a ton of damage. You know, Abaddon, known as a very tanky ship, but a Vindicator just doesn't care. I love it a bit for sure. And also, like, tackling the Abaddon doesn't matter too much because the Abaddon can shoot across the arena, but it doesn't matter. He can no longer escape you if he wants to. Also, are you, I mean, have a look at the Abaddon. Do you see a reactive armor hardener on that? I don't see the effect. Is he not fitted with a reactive? Is this like a full DPS Abaddon? This is maximum surprise. He's dropping very quick. He is doing a lot of damage. And again, Vindicator does a lot of damage. I'm not, I don't see the effect. Um, yeah, then again, that is a very it. pretty skin that will soon it be rubble. That was my excuse for looking at it. It's like, oh, is there a reactive armor hardener? Ignore the very, very good looking skin. But Abaddon's now into hull. He is not long for this world. If he's got a reactive, it no longer matters. Oh, and production is getting a sick money shot right now of the Abaddon about to explode. Here it comes in just another moment. Oh, man. I love seeing a Vindicator get oh, into the yeah. enemy line and pull out work. That's really what it comes down to. Um, the interesting thing as well is that the Paladin has just been effectively ignored. The Paladin actually went over and... Uh, uh, new didn't tackle the scorpion. Oh, the way. Vindicator just pulling an excellent micro warp to get way closer to the paladin. Well done. Uh, noticing, you know, I can reposition here. That's one of those things you look for in good pilots. The ability to quickly recognize a situation and one you can turn from, um, you know, maybe a minor disadvantage having the Vindicator have to burn all the way over to instantly being on top, instantly applying more damage to the Paladin. This Vindicator pilot has made sure that he's worth his weight in gold, as well as the Stabber Fleet issue pilot this, uh, this match. Oh yeah, the Scorpion is now permanently held. I mean, sure, like, the Paladin's on it, doesn't matter. He's nuding the Paladin now. And the Rodi versus perma repping the, the Scorpion now. So, yeah, Paladin tried his best, and it's just not going to matter. The Vindicator's got on top of him. The Scorpion is giving him a headache. Like, yeah, Marauders, they're not that good, at, like, at least not at the moment. We have to see, find a comp where they really work. Because at the moment, they're just getting destroyed. Absolutely. Um, it's one of those situations where it's just a ton of damage. It, if you can actually get on top of stuff, if you can actually apply, you're doing so well. You're so far ahead of the curve as far as DPS application goes. And in a 7v7 like this, where a single ship can really turn the tide of a fight, I absolutely have to hand it to him. The entire comp, except for maybe the Stabber Fleet, is very, honestly very tanky ships for their sizes. Even the Tormentor is a pretty tanky boy. I'm, I'm interested that they brought a Tormentor rather than a Punisher for some reason. Are they cheaper? I don't think so. But Paladin just gets deleted because, of course, is a Vindicator, and what's he going to do? Uh, the and now the, uh, the is extra points. Ah, there you go. I, I was, I wasn't sure on that. Thank you. So yeah, Punisher's extra points. So they went for the uh, Tormentor. They also have a more navy on the opposing team. So there's some weird ship choices. Yeah, absolutely done well though. Played well. 
we got to see it. the Vindicator in its prime on top of targets, which in a 10v10 fight with all of the screening that goes on, you don't get to it's see that as often. But right now, you got to see where the Vindicator lives in Breeze, and that is in brawling battleship combat. Slowing stuff down, reducing the transversal, and applying blaster damage. And man, does it make me, it makes me so happy. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just one of those things that I think any EVE Online pilot can get behind and can get, bring a smile to your joys. face. Yes. It's one of those pure joys. Like every time you see it, it just, it just makes you grin like, yes, let's go, boys! Get on the hype train, let's dance. But yeah, it's, that, that's a pretty clean run. I think that's actually a full clean sweep. Yeah, it was. Bravo. Absolutely. Hats off. Uh, that's also great to see because you know, clean sweeps are not something you particularly see that much with the rush comps. They tend to lose at least one or two, but these guys managed to pull it off without a single loss, including the stab of fleet. Like, what? How do you keep that alive when it got tackled at the start? That's you know, just bravo, we saw boys. in AT early on, we had a stab of fleet just jump into the enemy team, fly directly into them, get screens, get slowed down, but the stabber fleet is just deceptively tanky. It's fast, if it's dual prop, it can move, it can tank damage using that speed. And you know what? It does have some low slots to give it some armor tank. Yeah, the main thing was some sub fleets which, were, which made them pretty sneaky is that they could do tackles, but what they normally did was wait just a little bit longer. Just wait, and then once the, the fight started, they would dive for the back line, take out Megasus, take out Logi Frigates, take out any destroyers or even cruisers. Because at that point, the big fight's going on, who would target the Sabre fleet? And they do a lot of damage, and they have great tracking for it. So they are a great frigate killer and a great destroyer hunter. So it's, yeah, yeah I, it's just, yeah, they work so well. I love the ship to bits. Yes, it's fantastic at killing frigates, killing destroyers. A Draugr is going to have a pretty big sig radius, and it's going to be a lot, pretty easy for a Stabber fleet issue to hit. Radikos, how'd you feel about the match? Um, well, uh, I came in towards the tail end of the match, uh, because I had to go make some food quick and, um, it was, looked like pure domination from the other team. Uh, that Vindicator and Scorpion just didn't work. Well, cause we've seen variations of, on the Vindy, like with support, right? It's either like Vindicator with, a, with Armageddon for Newts or Vindicator with right. now Scorpion for, for ECM. It's oh. I mean, it used to be like Vindicator and Balgorn, you know? The webs plus newts. Right. I'm just lovely seeing this the different next variations match, on it. Oh. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, buddy. Be a good match. No. I mean, we can we can talk about it. It's not a secret. Do we have to hold the secret back? What do you think, Wingnut? Should we just should we just let chat wonder? Take bets on what, what yep, they're about yep. to do. Oh, it's, it's it's always fun letting chat suffer and wait and not know yep. what's happening until the last moment until we tell ex we expose the entire system. Yeah, let, let's let them wait a second or two, but let's all get very excited about it, though. Just to tease exactly. a little bit more. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Like, making me hungry now. Oof. Yeah, you're making me... I'm hungry, too. I didn't... I might have to go get food on my next, uh, on my <laughs> next set up. Oh, guys, you just can't see the awesome ships on grid. We're so excited about it. Ooh, but you're going to have to wait a little say, bit longer. There is a Vindicator. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Don't let out the surprise just yet, damn it, Radical. That's not the what is this? Ah, here we are teasing everyone, and Radicus comes and ruins the fun. Ah, we'll teach him later, guys. Don't worry. I am a thief of joy. <laughs> a thief of joy. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's start talking about the the uh, what's this what they've got here? Yeah, you can switch over. Yes, let's flip over to the other screen. Let's have a look, see guys. And it's going to be Radicos and DTM. So have fun, boys. All right. Well, on uh, one side <clears throat> of the scarf experts, we have a rattlesnake piloted by Alexander Chorigan. Um, we have a couple pair of gilas by Jaxer and Silo. Um, we have a stork by uh, Back Labak Slack, which we just call him Chewy, um, and they have a flycatcher uh, with uh, I can't say that name, but it is a cool name. And then they also have a basilisk, which is kind of odd, but maybe they believe in a basilisk. Uh, they usually don't do as well, but it looks like uh, the simi is not banned, so that's a head scratcher. But maybe they uh, 
maybe they believe in the basilisk. We'll we'll see how that pans out. What, what's on the other side, uh, DTM? I am seeing Shadow Cartel bring a Bargus. Big ship, scram bonus. Absolutely love it. I'm seeing a ship that I just got really excited about, and I'm getting excited about again, a Vindicator. We're seeing a Magus, a Deacon, a Thalia, a Vexor, a Purifier. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. Yeah, um, this is going to be a big old slobber knocker right here. I mean, the drones are going to do work, but if that uh, if that Bargus and Vindicator work together, it's going to be spicy. Yep. Vindicator starting out at zero right now, diving directly into the enemy comp. The same strat. You want to get on top. You want to do damage. You want to mm -hmm. be able to apply. We are seeing Scarf kite down a little bit, um, looking for the screen, because if they can stop the Vindicator out a little bit, they're looking oh, that really, really good. For Scarf experts, getting big reps from that Basilisk, but taking big ones. And the Thalia on Shadow Cartel is bouncing in between low armored. And oh, he's getting into hull. Oh, he's deleted. Woo! Look at those Gila drones go to work, boys. Absolutely. Now we're about to see the Vindicator throw its web down onto this Gila. We're about to see the absolute domination that a Vindicator can pull if it's doing it's like a lot of damage on something. But they drones. are losing support. Those Gila drones. Oh, man. Going at eating up a Magus just like nothing. That is not good. That is not good for Shadow Cartel. Yep, this Shadow Gila Cartel. Is caught. Oh, there's oh, a deacon after the doing deacon. a lot of damage, uh, having a lot of damage put onto it right now. Hoping, against all hopes, that the Bargist and the Vindicator can do enough oh, damage. Oh, deleted. deleted! Deleted! In a situation now where they're down all of a sudden a lot of DPS because a gila has gone, though a Vexor is probably about to go down right now. He's this not deacon long for this pilot world. doing his best, trying to stay alive, but trying to keep the Vexor up. That's a hard thing to ask of just a solo Lodgy like that. That Vexor, it's almost, and he's down. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, I mean, they spent so many points on those two pirate faction battleships, uh, 33 apiece, and this Gila, you know, is doing some work here. I yes, but the Gila's losing a lot of shields right now. This is going to be a situation oh where it's going to come down to the Rattlesnake, to the Vindicator, to the Bargus, to see if they can actually... Uh, a big thing, too, is this Basilisk is still definitely full health, still definitely keeping his distance, knowing how to manage his aggro. Um... Unless they can get to it with no support. The only other smaller ship they have on grid the is this Purifier. Oh, the Gila Purifier is got a huge hit. He is getting zonked out of this fucking arena. Whoop, sorry for the swear. <laughs> um, the, the Bargus now looking like it's going to uh, start getting a little bit of a, a scram and stuff on this because they want to take this Gila down. But without the support to make it easily apply DPS... Um, I say that they have a Vindicator, right? So they are definitely easily applying DPS. But without the support to make the backline worry to provide that sort of threat, um, are they going to be able to kill the Gila, um, assuming that the Bargus is rapid heavies on the Bargus reload? Well, I mean, the Scarf experts are lucky they have Jaxer Shadow Sun in that Gila, and he is one hell of a pilot. So if he can just manage to get away and kite and live to win, uh, I believe that they can make it, even if with this Kitsun just getting low. But the Basilisk is catching! Oh my gosh! That's one of the strengths of the shield reps. They apply at the beginning of the cycle. You can quickly switch targets. As soon as that module resets and you can start running it again, you're instantly able to apply to other things. The Kitsune is taking a lot of damage, but it is getting those reps. There is trouble, though. It looks that like Gila. the Gila is going in the shield. It has to make a decision as a Logi oh, pilot no. as it goes into armor. Here comes the hull damage, boys. Is he going to switch in time to save the Gila? I don't think so. Oh, there goes the Gila. Oh, no. What are they going to do with that last DPS? I don't know. I mean, Bargus versus... I mean, I, they're going to take the Vindicator down. But will the Bargus... Ba I mean, the Bassy does have, is still there. And I don't think they're going to be able to catch it because oh, the Flycatcher might. But I don't know if I'm going to put that much faith in a Flycatcher. Uh, the Bargus has a job to do right now. The Bargus wants... Absolutely wants to clear boosts, wants to clear tackle. That flycatcher still being on grid means there's no way they'll ever catch that rattlesnake. But this vindicator's gonna end up going down. It's gonna end oh, up man. being a battleship going into support a basilisk and a rattlesnake, and that is not a good situation to be on if you're Kari right now. He doesn't want to do that. You want to kill and the Chewie support. is catching reps from that basilisk. Oh too. man. Yep, it's it, it's he's in the hole now. Ayana. Oh man. I think we believe that's Iater. 
Yeah, look at his. Oh, finally they're getting on the bass list. But he still got he still got nine to Ansel reps. They can bait him all the way to almost armor, and he can rep up. I mean, I don't I don't see. With the vindicator oh, going down, vindicator it's like, what, down. It's oh, just it's not, not enough expert. time That's right so now. So huge for them. Uh, with and red right now has a point lead anyways all they have to do is kite and stay away from blue but we're seeing this once again lots of damage the basilisk gonna have to throw reps on him very quickly oh, there's Chewie's no way to go down on another the one. Oh, he Chewie is out of here out of this is one of those situations where the bargus range could really play advantage into it it's really if he's a good enough pilot to stay away but it looks like there's a scram going on the flycatcher being able to come in as tackle as support locking down the bargists yep that flycatcher he's he's doing it right now he's gonna take all that dps so that basilisk has to get in there and save him i mean oh boy he's in armor Vargas is clip doing work right now, and he's down. Now we just have a Vargas versus a rattlesnake and a basilisk. It's just not going to happen. You can't, you can't win this match with having this basilisk here. It's, it was one hell of a fight to, you know, bring it all the way down to this. But uh... if he can kill the bassy, which I don't know if he can, that is a tied points situation. But uh, I'm he's not in armor. It's one of those things he's got to be able to apply. He's got to be able to put his damage on it. This Rattlesnake's not going to want to let him do that. Rattlesnake pumps out a ton of DPS. It is an absolute fortress of a battleship, just like um, any other shield tanked battleship in the sort of the Kaldari um, as well line, as well as the uh, the the whole Garista's pilot line um, or mm -hmm. ship line. This is one of those situations where like he's got to use this his basilisk his might be. Might be out of his ans out of his uh, ansels. I've counted, I believe, seven or eight reps, and it looks like he's finally pushing through. But he's in armor. I mean, it's slow, but oh man, is he? Yep, is he that basilisk is going down. He's gonna go down if he can't get away. Well, it could depend on the reload of the the Bargust itself. There's another big ansel charge coming out, not Ooh. wanting to go down. Three minutes left. And now we're coming down to a time crunch thing here. He really does want to kill this Basilisk in the next three minutes. Is he going to be able to? There's just a lot of DPS. There's a lot of questions here um, as far as what this Bargist is capable of. We're going to find out if he has another Ansel charge here. It's not looking like he does. He's, he's going to go down. This is... Oh, man. He's going this half armor. This is a dangerous Talking situation through. for this rattlesnake. He was so far ahead. They had so he much support. He didn't make it MGD play. No, he's so far from one. Why did he not go to MGD play? Oh man. And there's a, there's a lot of damage. This is going to be tied oh, points. The bass he's down. There's oh, not man. a ton of time left on the clock. The rattlesnake has to get on top of him and burn him down. This is oh. one of those situations where if you're the Bargast, you have the speed. If you're fit with a micro, you have the ability to, to range. Um, does he defang drones and force the Rattlesnake to pull the drones back? He is half armor. Is he in a situation where he can make himself survive long enough to tie up the points? We are seeing his armor melt right now. We are seeing him in a situation that's just not particularly good for him. It's really, How much really time not. How that left off? Uh, one minute 40. Oh, right. I think he's going to push it. I think he's got this. He can push through that hull faster than that armor, don't you think? Or you think that armor? Do you think he'll be able to? I, it's it's really dependent on <sighs> how well he can This is a nail-biter right me. here. I'm going to lock up the drones. I got to find out if he's killing these things. It looks like he's trying to defang right now. A little bit of damage on the wasp goes a long way. He's just going to try and play around the arena as much as he can. Meanwhile, this rattlesnake is not going to be able to keep up with the Bargast. He's going nope. to he's gonna have to just hope and pray that these, vest, these wasps can do enough damage to him on their own to kill him. Otherwise, it's a tie match. This is this is Carl Rudolph Horse versus Alexander Dude, Turing. Is We're just... talking about it, man. Oh man, he is just like his shield is coming back a little, and then he takes a little armor, and then shield come back. I think he's gonna live. I think uh, one minute left. Oh man, sixty seconds to go. I wish I had a timer up right now. I might have to start one because this is just way too exciting right now. Oh, geez. this is a situation where 
Body Even he him. was behind, he was able to come back, kill all the support off the grid, tie up the points. I, if his team's not screaming in comms right now, I don't know what they're doing because that's absolutely what he wants to do. He wants to just live, tie it up, make that the match. He seconds. can do it. The flatness of the pancake can just not be Absorb contested the damage. With... Five. <laughs> There's no syrup! There's no syrup for this pancake! Two seconds left! It looks like it's gonna go to a tie, oh, boys! It goes to a tie! Oh, wow. That What an intense match. That Carl Rudolph horse, man. What a gamer. This pancake has no syrup. That was pretty good. <laughs> I, need that one. I need that one clipped and permanently saved, please. Thank you. I was, so, I was too excited. I'm sorry. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That's the matches. This is why we love EVE Online tournaments right here. Yeah, it oh, gets good, so good intense. It's just this, oh, it's so happy to have these tournaments back in the game. It just brings back so much competitiveness, and, you know, and people just want to watch this kind of stuff. You know, it's just so fun. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm still just dying from the pancake has no soup. I'm done. Like just, <laughs> it, he did a good job. He cleared the support exactly like he should have. You know, the the Bargust in general is a strong ship. It's not the damage of a Vindicator. It's not the absolute fortress that a rattlesnake is, but it can move. And that was to his advantage. He was able to get out of the range advantage. of the missiles of the rattlesnake and tie it up. Absolutely a fantastic, fantastic moment. Yeah, at the very end, I don't know if you guys saw that. He also went for the MJD beacon, so he was going to play for time by bouncing beacon to beacon. So he so, was doing exactly uh, what he needed to do there. Can we do another uh, shameless plug here for uh, Able Gamers Charity? Um, uh, yes, yes. So, uh, the, you know, they have a mission, um, and their mission is uh, to support players with disabilities worldwide, including the estimated 46 million potential players in the U.S. seeking to have their own enriching experiences from lasting relationships through gameplay. Our organization, or uh, their organization, works on both sides of the gameplay experience by engaging players with disabilities and game developers to promote accessible gaming solutions. Um, they, you know, they have, they have uh, how they achieve these missions. Um, they have expansion packs, fundraising, help to help our team fund and uh, create game rooms in hospitals or assisted living facilities that are filled with cutting edge assistive technology, including controllers and peripherals, console, PCs, video games, and swag. Um, they also have peer support. Uh, they have peer support counselors. They work on one-on-one -on -one with people with disabilities to help, uh, help, help them find assertive controller solutions that enable them to have optimal gaming experiences. If a player with disabilities is financially unable to purchase their own assistive solution, uh, able gamers will fund or engineer the controller setup, which is, you know, just a really great thing to do, you know, you know, for people with disabilities. I mean, it's like, you know, a great cause here. I'm with you on that one, mate. I very much agree. I hope. I also hope everyone's uh, donating to them because they are. I wouldn't even have. I wouldn't even have to say they're one of the best for sure. You know, and what you can do to help uh, is uh, hosting fundraisers, fundraisers, or donating funds uh, helps uh, their charity mission. Uh, sharing able gamers' resources on social media allows us to spread awareness. So please, just uh, you know. In these times, you just do what you can, and everything will, uh, you know, all the all the donations uh, help, um, and uh, you know, it's going to a good cause. So uh, try to do the best that you can. You know, everyone can't do something, but you know, anyone that can, you know, it's it is uh, very very appreciated. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Alrighty, well, thank you very much, Angle Able Gamers, as well. You guys are legends. Who's the next? What are we seeing on grid? Oh my god! Okay. I'm loving the difference in comps today. This is great. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. with you on that one, Ginger Flame. Too many wrecks, so the cleanup takes a while. <laughs> yeah, poor Soth having to go around clearing the wrecks. Did you know your uh, your space job was going to be a garbage man, Soth? <laughs> no, I did not. So, how are you liking your new career choice? Is it is it what you what you dreamed and hoped of? Oh, <laughs> uh, definitely. Yeah, see, everyone can be happy with their part. <laughs> Soft the garbage man. Does it pay well? Nikki's asking. Soft, does it pay well? Of course, it pays well. 
I mean, why else would I do it, right? <laughs> for the love of the game, my man. For the love of the sport. <laughs> Anyways, um, yep. Thanks, oh, Compton is arriving. I yeah. see. I see some some uh, ships here that will delete other ships, but maybe not as much as this other comp. But it's oh man, it's going to be a good match. I, I'm just loving it because. Right, Everyone used to joke about large lasers being trash, right? And just being crap. And even in tournaments, they were almost never used. Oh, I'm just loving seeing this. This is this is just putting a smile on my face, seeing rainbow lasers being fired in every direction. <laughs> the US dub is going to make more than teachers. Well, is that true? Is that actually true? <laughs> Don't tell me that's actually true, please. So what we're oh, my out is Doth is in, the, is in the, right, the right job right now. Oh my! I... Whoa! Look at these ships just getting in close. Oh, I know, right? Be a Bowls fight. of steel. Bowls of steel. We should be able to flip over to the other screen soon. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Can be interesting to see this one. Uh, because again, we're having this Guardian Aneros duel. We'll mm -hmm. see uh, what happens. But yeah, both we'll teams stream have up. brought an Abaddon or more. So yeah, yeah. how about we uh, go through it, a eh, Radicos? How about you start us off, mate? <clears throat> All right, on Turbo Feeder Glory, we have an Abaddon Guardian Double Oracle Arbitrator Double Hyena. Um, yep, me that's me a me lot of support, um, but that's a lot of DPS as well. Um, Meanwhile, Jovko really... heard that and went, you know what? What's better than one Abaddon? <laughs> Two Abaddons. <laughs> and then they brought Oneros, Draugr, uh, Augur and Navy, Mola, and Malediction. That one is very much random. I guess they just wanted to complete the Amarian theme with the confused and lost Draugr and Oneros. So yeah, like this this is a very brick tank ships, except for the Malediction, versus a lot of DPS with application. So the Oracles are great, but I feel like they've they're going to die quick. They're going to oh. die so quick. Oh, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how fast they drop. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, the Guardian will provide a lot of reps. Um, the only thing yes. is, you know, when you have two sets of heavies, um, of heavy rep bots on a Neros, it is going to tank. Um, with a uh, with two Oracles, they're just going more offense, it looks like. Um, these are Triple Feet of Glory guys, right? Is that the wrong guys? Roma ticker. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, you and me have seen what happens. Let me show info situations. here. <laughs> you just had to go double check, Mr. Radikos. Yes, yes, I just, had to go I check the info. Sure. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure who is who, you know? I want to hey. mess up the target All right, column. time is starting. Two, one. Let's go! I want to watch an Oracle links explode. Are up, links are up, I see. All right. I want to watch an Oracle explode. Come on. Blap these Oracles. It will take a while for the Abaddons to lock them, but I just want to see them just get deleted. The Nero looks like is the first DPS with the double oracles and the uh, Baden on Turbo Feeder Glory, but an, an Abaddon feel, yeah. is taking damage. There and we go, like Oracle. They make a trade. Oh, looks like the hyena is also taking some damage. Um, is that from the Draugr? Um, I believe that might have been like an early like attempt at just to snipe it, just kill it quickly. Well, they're still on it. They're go going over that over Oracle. I don't think that's too wise. I mean, they already have two hyenas. One hyenas will do the work as well, and they're splitting on to another oracle. Wow, the Aneros is the about to hit hull. Oh man, Joko about to, to throw set. it right here. That's what they need to do with the oracle set. They are just getting owned. Kill, if they kill the logic with this oracle set, they've got a damn good oh, chance of winning. Oh, he's so close. This. Is he gonna make? Is he gonna get out of range? Oh, I, he's gonna go further. Run away, dude. Get out of there. He's scratching. <laughs> no, ah, he ah, wrapped right, right, right. He's still holding. I don't think he that or Oracle is just going down. If that Oneros holds, that Oracle will do not being on the field will not push that or uh, that Oneros will live. I think. Oh my God! I think he's <laughs> gonna hold. I think those it. rep dots are gone to it. Yep, it's. They're putting everything into this too. They're not going for anything else. They're not trying to split now that he's too far away. They're See, just now that going Oracle. Through. He's gonna go down. <laughs> oh, and yeah, Oracle goes down. down. Oh, and that's that not good. Brutal. That's exactly what these Oracles did not. Well, that's the one thing is their lose oh, scenario. No. They lose DPS with no kill, they lose. That's it. That's all they have is DPS. Right. So at this point, it's just a downward spiral. I mean, they might hopefully get the, the uh, they on won't get still the but... He's going to catch now. They're too far. Yeah. They're going to switch. They're switching that other Oracle. 
They're doing this. Yeah, they they're go. shooting the Oracle and... Oh, no, they stopped oh, shooting the Oracle. Navy. Looks like they're kind of... Oh, whoa! Big oh, hit oh, on, whoa, the whoa. Exact, on the Oneros. Oh, my God. Is he going to go down? It, they need to. They have to. They, they just have to commit to it at this point. As much as they don't well, want yeah, to, they, they have, have to. I mean, they have to. Oh, he's in just the smallest sliver of hell right now, and he's Come wrapping on. back up. What's the on? Hold on, I'm trying to get the 2%, number. Two percent. Two percent hole right now. Oh, and he's wrapping my, back up. I love how my screen is bugging out, saying he's at negative one hundred percent armor. That's how yeah. ridiculous this is. The game's like, oh, oh he's, he's dead, mate. Down. There you go. Oh man, that's huge. Oh, finally. Field, now it's boy. a race. Now it's just oh. a race. They have to kill as fast as they can now. Rip DPS you know, apart. Kill the Draugr. Kill the yeah, uh, Ogre Navy. Go, go, go. They're gonna kill, the, right now, they're, they're not going after the Logitrade. They're trying to switch for the Arbitrator, which has most likely TDs on it. Oh, man. And Newt's, yeah. Yep. The Arbitrator's currently nuding out the Org Navy, which is actually interesting, because the Org Navy is generally the one doing that role. And but he's Hyena down. Pop, the Arbitrator pop. is down. Oh, man. That's Hyena not, and Arby at the same time. The glory. And their Guardian is at half armor. So, you know, I, I mean, looking at everything else, it's looking pretty darn good that Augur Navy is taking a significant amount of damage. Oh, Oof. and they're shooting. They're splitting Oof. DPS all over the place. I, I mean, it's working, but it, at the same time, oh, man. I like how everyone's avoids shooting the Abaddons. Like, everyone's like, no, 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 don't even bother yeah. shooting that. <laughs> that yeah, that Oracle. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, this is this is definitely a brutal. He's down. Oracle sure. is down. The, this other Og Navy is no longer for this world. Uh, without without that, uh, uh, man, that Nero side. Oof. Yeah, and now this the is uh, this was ridiculous. Well. This was such chaos. I love it to bits. But Abaddon, I don't, I don't know. Abaddon plus Guardian versus this entire comp. Is the Guardian going to be worth it, or, you, or not, you think? I, is it going to actually do the work? It, it's a, they actually need the Guardian to kill everything else for them. Can they even do that? I'm just doing like the mental math, and I, I'm not sure. They're, they're obviously going to go for the Guardian and kill it next. Yeah. So that hyena is uh, will go pop. I mean, they're He's being able to damage best. right now. You can't, I mean... Guardian, run, dude. Why are you staying next to the hyena? Go, run! Why are you standing right next to it? No! Chirager Dragon down! Goes pop. Chirager does yeah. go down! That is good uh, uh, yeah. for Turbo Fita Gloria. Uh, but Jovko still has an Og Navy issue who is not even taking DPS right now. Uh, you know, they have a Mauler and two Armageddons versus a uh, Guardian. So the Org Navy is kind of being Devon. webbed and painted by the uh, Hyena oh, now. So they're going about, all in yep, on him. They're going back on him. That Hyena, but, yeah, but, I mean, who, oh, he might go down. Wait, where's the Guardian? Hold on. Okay, Guardian's going down to help the Abaddon. Good, good. Hyena is probably going to die soon. They've done their best with him. They, they, Hyena yeah, is they, down. Hyena chance. is down. It's just an Abaddon and a Guardian versus two Abaddons, an Og Navy, and a uh, Mauler Malediction. F. F. If they got the Og Navy, I would have sworn an opportunity here, maybe. Yeah, they needed but... to kill the Og Navy before to, to stay. Exactly. I mean, I but like that, that was their last gasp right there. At this point, they can't do anything. Even though they've got a Guardian repping, I'm pretty sure two Abaddons will just rip through the other Abaddon. I don't even see a reactive on him again. Did everyone just forget the, the reactive exists? Like, what the hell? No. <laughs> I was looking around. That one's got a reactive. I don't. Yep, they have switched to the Guardian. And they are just. Gonna kill the him, Guardian yeah. Guardian is gonna get zonked. Yeah. At that point, they could pick whatever they want. I would still kill the DPS first, but I do. You know, I get it. At this point, it doesn't particularly matter. There's nothing the other team can do against them. Oh, there goes the, the Navy. Navy, though. Bravo. That is good. <laughs> like, you know, two minutes too late. Just two minutes. <laughs> but uh, but that, the Abaddon fight, it's so great, isn't it? Just see nothing but Abaddon's duking it out. I mean, the, the Mauler and the Malediction have it locked down, so there's no way it's getting away. No matter what, if they kill this one... I mean, he's not. they're not going to kill an Abaddon before uh, this Guardian. Oh, and before, that Guardian yeah. got a nice rep in, oh. but now he's down. He is down. It is yeah. uh, Abaddon versus the world right now. Um, good luck, Jezza uh, McWaffle. Uh, he should have gone for the play where he goes to the arena boundary to try and force them over. But he's going, just going in for it, which is fair. Yeah, I, I understand. He's, that. he's just trying to go for full DPS. I mean, two Abaddons versus one Abaddon and a Mauler. Two Abaddons and Mauler and a Ugh. That was a really good fight for most of the time. But once, uh, once they figured out that they had to kill those uh, oracles, I didn't see much happening. Uh, they're nearest tank so well that not just for me, it but did. also for. Uh, 
just for, not just for me, but for Ithaca as well. We have a screenshot of the of the uh, Onuris having negative 100% armor. Yeah, it tanks so well. The game just just went. No, he's dead, mate. He's dead. Why is he still alive? The game got <laughs> so confused. Bravo. Well, well played for sure. The extra DPS, I think, really does show it. And that's, I, th I, th I don't know if you agree with me, but I just feel like this is why oracles are not that good. Just you know, they can't. I, you, you bring one tool to the job, and the tool you're bringing, the Abaddon just does better anyway. I mean, yeah, it is a points difference, but uh, you know, if you're going to use an oracle. You know, you, you better either commit to going conflag or hanging out in Scorch Range. Um, and then they brought it with a Guardian. <laughs> yeah, and they brought it with a Guardian, exactly. Again, once again, showing that a Daenerys is uh, superior to a Guardian in this set, in, in this format. Yeah. Oh, bravo to Jovko. Well played, well flown. I love the Abaddon love, and uh, yeah, we'll hear what everyone else thinks about this one. Anyone? DTM? Ithaca? DT? DT? Yo, what up? DT? It's your boy DTM, three time back to back world battle cruiser solo PvP. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, oh. Says who? I kicked your ass. <laughs> I don't remember that. Too. Battle cruisers? I don't remember that. Oh, uh, I remember uh, Magus versus Confessor. <laughs> yeah, that's not battle cruisers. It's not the same. Um, <laughs> Battle cruisers are slow and easy to fly, so that's why it was. That's why you do very well with them. I do agree. Yeah, exactly. They're just like me. Um, no, I'm about to fly it anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't run very fast in real life. You, heard, like you a, heard it I'm here first, guys. Dude. DTM is easy to fly. DTM confirmed easy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You can ask my girlfriend. Anyways, maybe we should get away from these jokes and plug Able Gamers Charity. Yes. Um. Let's talk about Able Gamers for a moment, guys. If you're unaware, currently, we're doing a bit of a charity drive for Able Gamers. These guys are fantastic. They help out gamers with disabilities by giving them all kinds of different things. One of the things they do is peer support. They have peer support counselors that work one-on-one -on -one with people with disabilities to help them find assistive, assistive controller solutions that enable them to have the optimal gaming experience. If you're a player with disabilities and you're not able to purchase one, they'll actually try and help you out. They fund engineering and other things that help them with their controller setups. Fantastic. Um, so if you do, if you're fiscally able to, uh, please go down and donate a bit. It'll really help out um, people who need it. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, you know, and they have developer support as well. They uh, using their organization's research and advocacy. Uh, they work alongside game developers to encourage inclusion and accessibility uh, accessibility options that benefit players with a range of disabilities. Uh, this collaborative uh, effort leads to the development of more accessible games, um, which is just good for everybody. Um, Able Gamers has developed an accessible design thinking tool called Accessible Player Experience, an APX, which is avail available at uh, accessible.games. Yeah. Uh, Wingnut, is that microphone actually solid gold? Oh, absolutely, baby. No, it's, I just, I got rid of the cover a while back. I don't know where it went. I was like, eh, whatever. Shiny gold microphone, let's go. And a completely worthless green screen glued to the wall. <laughs> it's not glued, it's sticky taped, but you know. We'll High just say it's production glued. value is what I call that. Oh, I, I am maximum level production value. I, I have to show you, like, link you guys a picture later on about um, what it used to be. It used to be hung off of a curtain rail and then stuck to the roof Heck for yeah. about five minutes. <laughs> Soft, uh, don't don't you give me that lip. <laughs> just sob out of nowhere, just comes in to just roast my ass in a split second and leave again. But yes, uh, amazing I mean, production that's... value, sexy gold microphone. We also have a bunch of ships on grid. I want to have a look at this. I'm very excited because I'm seeing my favorite ship once again. I know, right? It's so good. Oh, wow. and, and you're not excited because there's two Lodgy types that you hate here so there are triangles yeah. here's the thing though right the best thing about it is they're next to my favorite ship which means my favorite ship will kill them isn't that great i get to watch mm. shitty triangles explode so i have a question for people or like what's, god what's tier behind triangles? the green screen i have to know now because now it's been brought up and i keep reading things in like different chats about it so i want to know what's my it's a wall you... it's stuck on the wall dude it's literally just a wall <laughs> It's. I, I've so, changed how my room is set up just to have it on the wall right behind me. That's it. That's all. Dude, just like that color of of green. Is that what I'm finding out right now? No, I bought it for cheap. 
He used to have yeah, like a shitty lamp that he just sat in front of him and took the lampshade off and it just made his face look absolutely radiant and everything behind him impossible this one? to see. Are you talking? Oh. So his face was overexposed the entire yes. time? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Why wood sunglasses? The first time we had him on the event channel, he had no backdrop. Sunglasses. He had this lamp in his face. He had like, it was the middle of the night in Australia. It was literally just his face glowing with he sunglasses was outside on in the rain. because it was the only way he could see things because he had a lamp in his eyeballs. Yeah. We're good to switch over, by the way. We're switching over. All right, cool. N enough about me, my shitty lamp in production value. More about this shitty tournament. I'm sorry, what? Um, Whoa. This amazing tournament and these amazing ships. And as a Vindicator on grid, and I'm very excited. Yeah, so paper numbers coming in with a Vindicator Scorpion Rodiva, which is the best rep ship in this tournament. Uh, Augur Navy issue, Stabber Fleet issue, Magus Tormentor. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the other side, Wingnut? Uh, yes, I'm just looking at it and being disgusted by the ECM, but Tempest, Abaddon, Vexter, Zahmad, Double Blackbird, Punisher. That is a wild comp. That's a lot of DPS and a lot of uh, Logi and a lot of support in the Blackbirds. Why did team get five bands and the team get four? Uh, uh, because the one team forgot to give me uh, a second band for duplicates. There you go. Absolutely. That's your answer. We're seeing the start of the match already as the Vindicator tries to get in. Um, but it does look Tempest is like... charging. Tempest is charging the Vindicator. He's he's charging uh, fighting him in honorable combat. So, Tempest well, versus Vindicator. Oh, what is man. he doing? Tempest I don't going know. Dragon at zero. We're about to see hopefully the webs apply here in a second as the Vindicator. Hold on a wait, 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 wait. He's Yui. not being locked. He hasn't, he hasn't actually been webbed by the Vindy yet. He could have gone past, but he stops and turns around, tackles the Vindicator directly. He, he actually is willingly doing this. He actually could have gone straight There's past. There's the it. damage. I'm seeing it right now. Come down onto the Tempest. Oh, this is going to be a brawl at zero. Big ball play. Tempest can actually hang really well, but its one weakness is that the tank is never particularly amazing. But he's just going. I don't care. I want a Vindicator scalp on my wall. And you honestly, might have look at one the here. Damage. Yeah, look at the damage. He's actually, actually, he's kind of getting it. Because obviously the, the jams of the Blackbirds are just giving this Vindicator and the rest of his team an absolute headache. Yeah, it's looking right now like the Magus was getting reps. It's looking like the Rodiva is going to have to make a decision here. Meanwhile, a Vexer of Maladon's about to go down, absolutely decimated. The Vindicator is not getting any reps or anything. It's about to go into Hull. Is it Hull tanked? It doesn't look like it. Not at all. And I bet you all the jams on the Blackbirds are now all of them on the Rodiva. Every single one just to make sure he can't land a single rep on this Vindicator. The Vindy goes, I wouldn't call that GT, but that's so painful. That is so painful. That is a huge portion of your team's DPS, but he looks like he's actually repping a little bit, but it doesn't matter. The bleed through into no. the, the hole is going to end up killing no. it. Come on, hold, buddy. I love it. He just needs to battle hold battle 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 to make yes, a trade, on. but it doesn't look like he's going to be able Boom. to. The Vindicator does go down. Sin and the Tempest making a really good call to, to dive Ooh, early look at the on. Look at the Blackbird of Spice Weasel. Again, this is what Sapper Fleet does well. He went burning around to the back line. He's now on a Blackbird on his own, a mile from everything else. And no one's going to stop him from killing us. The Logi's a mile away too, so he can just kill this Blackbird freely. Yes, the Augur and Navy issue is going to have to figure out how to put in work um, without the Stabber Fleet around. The, the real question is, do they have the, the damage to kill the Tempest at the moment? Or are they going to have to, you know, hope Ignore that they it, carry avoid it, through yeah. with their reps go through and kill all of the support and then slowly whittle down the two battleships. And this was an ECM fight the whole way through. This is Scorpion versus Blackbirds. And it's actually crazy. And Yeah, that Blackbird's going to go down. The Tapa fleet will hold him, but the Org Navy now is just getting pounded. He's trying to tackle the Tempest, I think. No, no mind. I actually don't see a single web or scram any. What the hell? No one's... What? I'm sorry. I'm just getting very, very confused. The Org Navy isn't tackling anything. Nor is the Tempest fleet or anything around it tackling the Org Navy. Everyone's just... Having a you know honor point, I guess. <laughs> honor point. I mean, they, it'd be it'd be interesting if they warped off anyways. But it looks like there is damage going on to the auger. Um, and yeah, the, the scorpion Tempest Tempest now on the uh, scorpion. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, those go. those blackbirds are also staying pretty healthy right now. It looks like they're a diva, or it, more so, I would say, rep drones potentially. The Zarmad. The Zarmad came back and repped them. Fantastic. It's one well, of those they move situations. Towards the Dark, one of the two. Sorry. Go ahead. 
No, it's just one of those situations where they really need to kill the support off because they don't have a ton of DPS on grid. They have until their scorpion goes down before they have no more way of mitigating significant DPS, and that's when they're going to be put in a lot of trouble. He's right. They did the right thing. They split DPS. They you know we're going after the black bear while also fighting in the middle to try and split the Zarm. But again, this is the point. The problem where it's like this is where the Zarm is actually good, where you have to shoot the Zarm because they can't shoot anything else because anything else will get wrapped by the Zarm now and they haven't got the well, dps to like break through things they can't they can't shoot through the Zarm until they kill the blackbirds either there's layers of it's, support they first, have to, yeah. it's like peeling an onion you have to go by layer by layer because you can't get to the they have layers layer it's, yeah, it's a, pr it's a layers. pretzel onion it's a pretzel onion because each layer is connected to the other layer it goes every direction it's painful every level of it just tries to kill them but what yeah, the australian is a pretzel onion <laughs> pretzel onion. <laughs> you never had onion rings? I mean, I've had onion rings, but... Now, imagine them pretzel, pretzel shaped. There you go. You're welcome. Uh, anyway, so it's, so it's not up. pretzel, it's an onion. It's a pretzel, but it's... A, it, it's an onion, but it's pretzel shaped. Mm. Okay, anyways, the scorpion going down <laughs> into low hole right now. Uh, yeah. Taking a lot of damage. It's one of those situations where... They, 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 like I said earlier, they have until the scorpion goes down. And even though it's getting reps right now and they are spooling up on it, um, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to matter. kill the things they need to kill in time. Yeah, there's, there's, unfortunately, there's nothing they can do. That Zarm is in the perfect spot. They haven't got the DPS anymore. If they had more DPS, they could force the Zarm to make choices. But now that they lost their Vindy, there is no choice to make. The Zarm can just rep whatever is being targeted over and over and over and over and just keep doing that. So even though the Scorp the uh, sorry the uh, Stabber fleet did a really really good job of going out and tackling the Black Bird, and even the Org Navy I believe is doing the exact same thing, there's just no benefit to doing it now because they can't force the Zarm to make that choice. The Zarm can do both. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's I'm, it's I'm, a I'm, it's just a hard situation. It's a it's a tough nut to crack. They have to do something really ingenious here in order to kind of pull themselves away from the situation because. Even if they do manage to start getting through support, they're on a timer right now, and they need to be able to get at least equal in points if they want to tie. I am seeing a little bit of damage onto the Zarm right now. Granted, that's just through shield, so it's not really that exciting. You smart bombs on a Blackbird? I did. There's smart bombs on that Blackbird. Wow. I There's more than one. They had, like, multiple smart bombs. That is... Okay, I mean, that's a pretty cool to idea. To be honest, what else are you going to put up there? I mean, you save the fitting for more tank or something else, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I guess so. It does cost a lot of fitting to fit those, so bravo for them, that's an interesting idea. And it might have actually saved those blackbirds, to be fair. So I can't even, I can't even shit talk that, that's interesting. But yeah, this comp, I love it to bits. Like, a te the Tempest went this absolutely YOLO mode and charged a Vindicator. And went into the brawl and, and then and won it, it. And it was good. I think when we said that they weren't locking them, I think it was actually the blackbirds landed a jam. Yeah, exactly that. And they were able to capitalize very early on on that. And suddenly, the interesting thing as well is that they had the scorpion up. the other side. They could have done the exact same thing and jammed the tempest as well. But the scorpion just could not keep up with the double blackbird jams. You just couldn't really affect the match the same way the uh, blackbirds were able to do. It was very yeah. interesting. I love it. Yeah, it was definitely interesting seeing these two comps go against each other. I'm sorry. Apparently, I'm getting more texts from my girlfriend's grandma than I've ever received at any point in my life before. Um, Anyways, yeah, I think it's definitely one of these interesting situations where there's just a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things that could go on with either comp, but it's kind of that RNG of like if we land a jam on the Vindicator, we might as well go for it before it can apply DPS. Sorry, I just got something that surprised me on the side. No worries, you're absolutely fine, Wingnut. Uh, okay, like, you just, as you say, you got messaged by grandma. I'm getting messaged by people saying, like, what is this world? I want to watch an awesome match. Can you guys wait, like, a minute, please? <laughs> Org Navy's now being primary by the Tempest. And, yeah, the Tempest actually does really well on its own. Like, two utility high slots, five mid slots, enough load slots for your tank and DPS. It's, it is honestly a very versatile ship. The problem is the Jack of all trades master of none. You're never going to be the best at anything you're doing. Well, that's why you But in this situation, you can do everything. In this situation, it's great because it's doing everything effectively. It can be the DPS it needs to be. It can go out and be a ridiculously heavy tackle ship. It can provide two yep. heavy nukes or smart bombs. So it's, well, what I'm surprised just, right now is they're not splitting DPS just to take down the other guys faster. I mean, that's all they need to do with this trick logic. Yeah, that's true. They they've got the Abaddon and Tempest, so they thing. could actually do it. They, they should I do be. agree.
I do agree, actually, because yeah, this, this situation here is you're probably saying the other team could do the same. They can't. The, the Tempest Abaddon can do it because they have enough DPS to split the uh, Logi. Whereas on the other side, they don't have the DPS to actually force the Logi to make that choice, as I said before. So I don't know why they're not doing it. I guess they just don't care. They know they're going to win anyway. So just pick a target, shoot it, and just stay, stay safe, I guess. 50 seconds. But, but we both agree. They, they should be splitting to, to break up more ships. Oh, well. But yeah. How many seconds you said? 30 seconds? 45 yeah, now. Not a lot of time go. left on the clock. It's one of those situations where, you know, at the end of the day, um, you make the best calls you can, and if things don't work out, they don't work out. I, I think both teams performed really well, though, honestly. Very um, much so, yeah. They could. This is one of those situations where it is kind of RNG. Not totally. Um, but if you land the proper jams at the right time, you're going to be in a very good situation. And this this goes to another thing, like why we saw a lot of value come out of the Blackbirds. Shorter lock time. Much shorter lock time than the Scorpion. That's... And multiple ships too, on. so you could play the ECM yeah. bounce. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fantastically done. Fantastically done, I have to admit. Jintan brought a very interesting comp um, that played well. Yep, and the, with the timer running out right now, that's bravo for uh, willing to buy Cat is Well played for sure. Even though they have that disgraceful triangle logic, they flew this, this uh, comp very well and did very good damage with it. Bravo, boys. Uh, fantastic. Well, we'll probably be going back to the caster screen, I imagine. Hey. Oh, there we are. There's our beautiful faces. Mostly just yours, not mine. Um, <laughs> I'm missing my glasses, though. I don't get to look sexy. I have to look like me now. So I do have That's some bad. Yeah. I have some bad news, Wingnut. Oh no. We're coming up on the last match. This is the last match of the day. Oh no. Wolves More. among strangers, or wolves among strangers versus snuffed out. The bands have been Ishtar. Blackbird, Gila, Scorpion, Ishtar, Loki, Curse, Zarmzad. What do you? No what triangle. Are you well, they could bring Rodiva, but um, yeah. we've been seeing a few more Rodivas now, which has been nice. I bet we're gonna see some Gilas in this comp. If they're not bringing yeah. Gilas, I don't know what they're doing with their lives. I'm actually there's like a, a little bit. Band. I don't there's like the Zarm so much, but there's a Gila band. Oh, okay. Okay. Ishtar, Ishtar Blackbird, Gila, Scorpion, Ishtar, oh, Loki, Gila. Curse, Zarm are bands. Uh, we could see, uh, I think Oracle Abaddon again, or, uh, possibly, uh, maybe some Nighthawk rush. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, we haven't seen any Nighthawks. Uh, there was a lot of them in AT, but when you're reducing the numbers of players, you know, these guys sit around, they think about this stuff, you know, maybe they're not quite bringing their, their super A game to uh their super a a level comps to it so maybe we haven't seen any for that reason but they were really popular in at last that's the main week. reason why we, we brought it last week uh, we, we did make stopped. them more expensive yeah that too i mean you're not going to get a, the dps you want out of it when you only have two night hawks and loki instead of three night and three night hawks and two lokis or two night hawks and three lokis like that's just and obviously sport but you just not since this dps isn't the same you can't control as much with just one web you know you just you can't and you know to be fair that's kind of what it comes down to in some regards it's about oh, absolutely. what you can what you can control on the grid and you know that's kind of what a lot of what some play styles are completely based off of it's just we're gonna have so much control we're gonna control the grid and decide what happens just from the perspective of the enemy can't do what they want to do effectively oh absolutely King was arriving oh. in Britain, so I'm kind of distracted. Yeah. Oh, wow. Speaking of. Yep. I've never seen this yeah. before. This is interesting. This we've is seen, very interesting. We've seen little versions of this, but this is definitely definitely a little out of the blue for sure. I honestly didn't I'm expect excited. to try this. Yeah. Oh, this my. Oh, that. my. We might see a favorite ship die, TTM. It, it, it mean, might be dead. Yeah. It might go. Once hey, again, bro. there is a Vindicator on field. Very popular again. ship today. Very popular ship today. Yeah, but unfortunately, I actually think, depending on what else shows up, because obviously they're not all here yet, it, it might not last. It, it might die a painful fire. Well, yeah, exactly. Enough, Vindicator, yeah, boy. I agree. We can switch over if Mac is ready. Uh, we're still missing some ships, I think, aren't we? No. One, two, three, four, five. No mind, I'm an idiot. Ignore me. Pick 
people not being in corp. All right. Looks like four snuffed out, bringing a 99-point comp with a Nighthawk, Scimitar, Double Onyx, Jackdaw, Harpy, and Kitsu. What is uh, Wolf bringing over there? I'm seeing a Vindicator, an Oneros, Vigilant, a Shimu, Draugr, Pontifex, Heretics, or a Heretic. Lots of webs. Definitely yes. plenty of control if they try and dive into these guys. That's going to be something to look for. Um, we are seeing blue side snuffed out starting at zero, wanting to get very quickly onto the enemy team. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who uh, who gets the jump on one another. But uh, I can see, are those uh, hams on the Nighthawk and uh, Onyx? You would think it would be. I can't tell on my potato computer, so. It's okay. I'm also on a potato right now. Maybe uh, someone else can let us know. The ham. The yeah, definitely I ham. They are. So they're going to have to go right in on the uh, Vindicator, um, which I think if they had another Nighthawk uh, instead of... Oh, but here are the links. Here are the links going up. Match is starting. Instantly we have them diving dropping in. drones, burning at each other. The Vigilant is getting screened by the Onyx. <clears throat> Looks like, uh, what's his the name? Sijus? Sijus? Okay, the Vindicator is taking first damage. That's a good damage. That's a good DPS uh, target to call first. And the Nighthawk, also a uh, good uh, primary to go after for uh, Wolves and Strangers here. Um, but that ham DPS is showing what it can do against the Vindicator, and it is pushing through Onirion's reps and Retrons. <clears throat> yes, the, uh, the Heretic launching a Wubble. Uh, I actually got scared for a moment because I was like, me why too? is someone shooting me? Uh, yeah. But we're, we're good. We're safe. The Vindicator is that taking Vindicator. a lot of damage right now. But the, the Nighthawks? Man, we're seeing Scimitar. I think the Nighthawk is just saying. doing its work. Yeah, the Scimitar is doing its job right now. He's just kind of like a gal, gal darn champion. Uh, Michael Rinna, once again, uh, just keeping his Nighthawk up, his whole team up. Oh, looks like the Kitsune's getting a little bit of attention here. But I don't think that's good. I think they need to focus everything up. You know, I'm sure they're getting jammed a little bit, but... The real question is whether or not the Vindicator is getting jammed, and it's really not. It's firing onto this Nighthawk, and you're seeing what the ability of a ship um, to really rep is right now. The mm -hmm. Scimitar reps a lot of damage, um, and the Nighthawk is incredibly tanky. Insanely yeah, and tanky. the DPS that those three ships are putting out right now for that team is insane because it is pushing through the Lodgy. They're able to keep in within range, even with all those reps. That Vindicator, oh, big rep right there, but I don't know if it's gonna hold him. He is going through, oh, oh, another rep. It's one of those things where maybe the Oneros has been getting jammed. Maybe the, the Kitsune has been a bit of an issue, and suddenly, all, all of a sudden now, you're seeing the reps come through, but there is armor bleed. So his hull will get damaged if they don't keep it above a certain point. And that's really the name of the game for them right now. Don't get jammed again. Don't die. But the Vindicator looks like it's about to go down. He is down. He is down. It looks like the Scimitar is getting some DPS upon on it. It is scrammed by, and getting neutered by the Ashimu, and, or webbed by the Ashimu, and getting neutered. Um, and, you know, it looks like it's split DPS right now, but uh, Wolves Among Strangers here lost a big part of their dps and i know this is going to help them i don't i don't see them uh, pushing through with this uh you know still the kitsune's on field scimitar is only rep three times i believe and the nighthawk is just chilling like it's no big deal well and with those wobbles you're slowing everything down the area suddenly you don't have to worry about getting the webs onto something and slowing it down and waiting for it to slow right. down for the games are playing you can just wobble when you feel the time is right and suddenly everything is that jack that area... killing rep drones too is that what was happening there? Why the why it finally went down and was he? Oh, bam! The Skitsu gets fucking zonked, boys! Oh man, out of nowhere! That's uh, those are jams down for them. Uh, no longer having those jams might might do something here. We are seeing a lot of reps onto the Heretic. Heretic staying alive relatively well right now. Yeah, um, well they they're tanky little gone. boys. That yeah, Scimitar though, I don't know how many more uh, reps he's got left on him. I mean they do. <sighs> It's a oh, game big rep, right big now. rep. He's still got a couple left, I think. I think he's got a couple left. But that's the name I... of the game right now for yeah. Wolf Among Strangers. They want to, right now, get in a situation where they kill enough of the support off that their reps can kind of be ridden out. They still have a Vigilant. Lots of DPS. 
um, they still have options right now to actually kind of get ahead of the curve, but they want to get the semi down without losing anything. And they really are trying their best to keep this heretic alive. The more and more he tries to go down, just hovering at that 30% armor mark, 24% structure remaining, absolutely um, impressive from the Logi side of things right now. There's a scram yeah, this is going huge. down to the Ashimu. The scimitar, he can't, he can't have any more reps left. He's got to be done unless he's just boosting his cap up just to get a rep. Another one! Huge rep by Michael Rinna and, uh, of Snuffed Out. Oh my gosh. He just won't living. Be stopped. The, the beast mode machine. And the Ashimu. Now the question the Ashimu is getting that DPS. That Ashimu gets out of there. Oh, the scimitar's hitting armor! Absolutely in Is he going to go right down? Here. Oh, Are they no. going to make the trade? There's a oh, huge rep again! He just doesn't want to stop! He wants to keep his tank up. He wants to keep his shield up. He is struggling, though, right Bleeding now. Hold against that, the deep that Ashimu. Are they going to get the trade off? Is he going to get one more rep off? That They're in real danger if they do not trade for this Ashimu. Oh, that mo the scimitar goes down! It looks like this Ashimu is holding a little bit. Oh, Keeping this is not good. Up. There's some damage onto the heretic again right now. Now Blue has to look at it. All right, we're on a timer. We don't have as much tank as we did before because the semi's down. We just can't count on the reps all the time. We're looking at a Harpy go down. That's more control off the grid for them. For Wolves Among Strangers to be able to get away, be able to create space that they want or get in close where they want to be, um, as well as kind of protect their own arrows, protect the rest of their guys um, and stay ahead of the curb. There's a Harpy big damage down. down to the Harpy. And the, he, that Neros is just doing work right now. Wow. Keeping up two ships at once for this Wolves Among Strangers teens. I don't know if Snuffed Out can do it. They, do they even have the control to hold anything else down? Or are they, is this armor team going to be able to kite around here and get away? It looks like uh, the Onyx is tackled pretty hard. Beyond uh, that, just at the moment, the, the points are tied up. If Blue can figure out a way to mitigate the DPS and get out of this tough situation right now, and Snuffed Out can pull sort of away and use their range a little bit more because the Vigi, close range damage, right? You're looking at the Draugr also wants to get in close to spool up and apply maximum damage. Um, mm -hmm. They want to pull away. It doesn't look like they're going to allow them to because Vigilant Webs, plush Ashimu Webs, you know, that's going just for this situation. This Lodgy trade is a little, little too late, I believe. I don't uh, I mean, they're they're going for DPS on it, but they're not applying. Uh, yeah, Onyx on the Vigilant now. So the Vigilant's going to start taking DPS here instead. Looks like he caught him. Well, the that Onyx is right low shield. Is even if with them pumping DPS in an Oneris, that's not Whoa. a shield tank. That's the power an Afterburner has. The Vigilant. Oh, and the sh oh. and the Onyx goes down. Even and that on the other side, the Vigilant is eating shit. Oh, oh, but the Neros is catching now. The Neros is catching that Vigilant. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so as I was saying, even with them putting DPS onto the Oneros, it just doesn't matter. With the AB on, it's mitigating so much damage, it was barely able to get through shields. Suddenly, Blue's got to make a decision. They're like, we need to switch to something else. Switching into the Vigilant, but the Oneros is still left. You're absolutely right when you say the DPS trade for the Oneros or the, the Logi trade just came in too late as a call. You need to be able to make that call earlier to to suddenly put both teams on timers because when the reps yep. aren't there anymore, you only have so much HP left in your team. Yeah, and they're not, be, I mean, are they applying to anything right now? And Aneros is out free doing his thing with rep drones on him. He's not getting attention. They're still shooting at the, uh, at the Vigilant, probably because it's webbing down the in, looks like Infantas and the uh, in the other Onyx. Yeah, it's this is a little too late for uh, snuffed out once again. Incredible piloting uh, by their uh, Logi again. Uh, big big shout out to him. But um, looks like even without a Vindicator, uh, Wolves Among Strangers is gonna pull this one out. It really was a big loss for them early on in the match. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of damage and, and you know, another 90% web to lose. And now you're in a situation where you're like, you know, what do we do to make the comeback from this? Getting onto the semi was the right call. The semi pilot trying his best to stay ahead of the DPS curve. We saw that last big boost, the last hurrah to try and keep himself alive. And 
you know, getting the maximum amount of HP out of it, fantastic job, but it just wasn't enough. Um, they were able to keep their Ashimu up, they were able to keep their Heretic up, even though they both got really low, and that's what you want. Logi pilots make or break games, matches, and teams. Anybody who ever says anything different has clearly not watched enough EVE Online. This Onero keeping his distance, staying where he needs to do. Not like the Semi didn't try. Um, there's only so much they can do on their own. But exactly, a good Logi yeah. pilot who understands how to rep when the reps need to land, which is the most important thing, um, especially in an armor rep, wor worth their weight in gold. It looks like the Pontifex and the Draugr are going after that lone Jackdaw um, with this uh, Nighthawk uh, entering armor here. Um, McCreckett does just go, is he, looks, is he going for the MJD? Is he going for the MJD play there? Is he going to try to get out and uh, boundary? Trying to get on the AT team for boundary experts next year? Oh, he just clears it. He just goes right past it. Doesn't even want to go out to the boundary. Oh, well, maybe he's just burning for it. He's only got 20 kilometers. Oh, he did MJD. He did MJD. Good man. Good man. See, this was such a gripping match that I even forgot to look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what a... What a... What a fun day filled with fun matches. Yeah, that was so much. Go back. Vindicators just getting popped left and right. Or popping other ships, too. We've that seen too. both good uses and bad uses of Vindicators. We've definitely seen strengths and the weaknesses of the Vindicator here today um, on display. Is, there, is also, that bad use of Vindicators? Of, uh, jams uh, is, has also been uh, on display here today. Uh, very, very uh, big gur from uh, Radicos on the jams. But, uh, you know, people got to do what they got to do to win, right? I see you're an avid uh, believer in the 404 faith. of Yes. Uh, yep. He is uh, a great uh, person of uh, faith in that department for me to be a beacon, uh, you know, and, and just know that the jams are broken. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. I mean, don't get me started on Hornet ECs, please. I, I, I would, I would re upon them for the next hour. What is your guys' top match of the day? Uh, that I think Scarf Experts. as Hell Blaster Rush. I think. Sorry, go ahead. The Scarf, Scarf Experts uh, versus uh, the Bargist and Rattlesnake match it went down to the Basilisk. You know, he did the Bargus just like worked like a boss and killed all the support, and then it, you know it became a. Uh, you know, it became Bargus versus uh, Rattlesnake. I thought that was, I thought that was a great match. I agree. Absolutely. That was Scarf Experts versus uh, Shadow Cartel. Uh, Shadow Cartel, yeah. Fantastic match that one was. Yes, yeah, honestly, my remember. favorite was that weird Blaster Rush. Like the Blaster Rush with the Scorpion in the back line was such a, like we have this obviously known idea and comp, and we just throw this one curveball into it, and well, it just the audio is a big reason why that match went well for them. Um, he piloted very excellent uh, uh, in that Scorpion. So, and you got to remember, in the actual tournament, um, once the ten minutes are over, um, it's not a tie; it goes into negative tie dye if both teams have the same amount of points. That means that good, everything yeah. will get faster. Um, and I, th I think in that case, it would be probably the Rattlesnake that would win Rattlesnake versus Bar. Absolutely. Guy. Because he just has to like the sit there, flies. look pretty, and push F, and it doesn't happen any faster. Whereas the Bargas got to manage moving around, he's got to manage his heat for his rapid heavies, his it's... heat for his tank, making exactly. sure he's cap injecting and hitting him right at when the, when it gets over the cycle time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cycle time becomes. I've flown Tinker Logi in the Alliance tournament um, when it went to reverse overtime in the Tengu, and it was, it's the module speed and it's the heat that's what will kill you. Right. Yeah. I hear we are. About to hand over to the next broadcast. Um, yes, yes. Any final thoughts on today? Uh, yeah, today was great matches between everybody, real competitive. Um, and uh, hopefully we don't see uh, ECM next week as well. Uh, that's my hope. I just want to say thanks to DTM and Radicals for showing up. Makes a very different part, uh, cast, doesn't it? The Maximum Heart cast team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to say thanks for everyone uh, for yeah, having everyone, me. And I'm, yeah. I'm very proud of every competitor today. Y'all did excellent.
Oh, I'm yeah. proud of our production. Big Daddy Ithaca is proud. <laughs> can we can we get a round of can we get some X's in chat just to show some support for McLeod and Sloth and uh, Ithaca who did cast a bit, but was these three guys working behind the scenes to make sure that uh, we can cast without having to worry about too much and that uh, the the stream looks pretty. Thank you guys so much, man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, big shout out again to uh, Able Gamers Charity. Um, again, if you are fiscally able, please donate to this uh, wonderful cause. Let's uh, hand it over to the next boys. Thank you so much, everyone. You've all been awesome.